today on Doomed! 2023 has not been Steven Crowder's year. From YouTube's political right-wing golden boy, literally, I'm pretty sure, like, the biggest political streamer on YouTube overall. From that, to getting multi-million dollar offers from the Daily Wire, to burning it all down, and now streaming for, I don't even know what, what percentage of that audience he had over on Rumble. And of course, he's had personal issues, which he's made public himself, uh, with his family life, his married life, and more. And we'll be getting into all of that. It is the decline of Steven Crowder. And joining me now to discuss all of this, let me pull us up on the stream, is Media Matters senior researcher, Jason Campbell. Jason, thank you so much for joining me once again. You, you, this is your uh, second time on the show, if I'm uh, not mistaken. Yeah, I talked about Crowder last time, too. Thank you so much for having me. You are my go-to Crowder guy. <laughs> you are, that's, not, that's not a bad position to be. <laughs> right. You are the, uh, the Steven Crowder expert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm flattered. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, it must it must have been quite a year for for you as well to be the Stephen Crowder expert. Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, it's pretty rare to like see someone that you've been monitoring and tracking for a few years just so spectacularly implode. I, I can't think of another example quite like it. Right, and when we should say like you know he's obviously still relevant. He's still around. He'll probably be around. Uh, he's not going anywhere, but. Uh, he is nowhere near as influential, as big. Uh, he's probably making a lot less money than he was just, I feel like, just maybe at the beginning of the year. Like, just in, a, in just a few short months, this dude has just dropped a lot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, both uh, a mix between just sort of loss of influence by just view metrics. Um, on his videos, but then like these, you know, sort of series of scandals that he's had in his life over a relatively brief period of time. Um, you know, I, I'm not going to say that it's necessarily intentional, but like it's kind of hard for it not to look that way at some points. Right, right. So let's let's before we get too deep into the decline of Crowder, let's just roll it back a little bit. Uh, for anyone who this month, maybe this is the first episode of this show they are tuning into and they've missed all the other times I've brought up Steven Crowder on this show. And it's been it's been a lot. Um, let's give a quick breakdown for people coming from the Steven Crowder expert too. just who is Steven Crowder? You know, Steven Crowder is a lot of things, but I think that the sort of important title to put on first is that Steven Crowder is a bully. That's just whoever it is that you remember from your maybe middle school or high school years is that person who bullied you. That's what Steven Crowder is now an adult form. And he has a large audience just to spew his bullying content on people. I mean, yes, Steven Crowder is racist. Steven Crowder is extremely bigoted towards the LGBTQ community. Um, Steven Crowder has, you know, authoritarian politics, but like ultimately he's a bully. And um, over several years, he's successfully built up a larger audience um, on YouTube, and which has now switched over to Rumble for him. Um, and it's a place by where he can continue to put out all of the hateful content that he has about people. Um, and he's been quite lucrative for him all the way until, well, 2023 at least, when things started turning around. Right. Like, this is a guy who I feel like... Um maybe one of the biggest beneficiaries of the old YouTube algorithm. Like mm -hmm. he was just constantly, everything he put out was getting recommended. And, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like he probably was the, um, the, you know, that, that first watch for someone who then would fall uh, deeper and deeper down the old YouTube 
rabbit hole of conspiracy theories, misinformation, and far right content. Now, you know, over the years, you I would say the problem on YouTube it still exists, but it, it's they, they've definitely worked on it after so many people criticized them so much for it. Um, but like at that point, it was too late. The channels that benefited from it, you know, just a couple of years ago, they're they're now huge, and none of them are bigger than Steven Crowder's. Yeah, I mean, it's difficult to say even what YouTube sort of series of suspensions that they would put against him over the span of several years. And back in 2000, early 2022, I wrote a piece where I looked back on 2021. And during that year, he had, I think, four YouTube suspensions, which is a lot for a year. Um, and it just that none of them managed to overlap in this sort of 90 day window that would have um, uh, qualified him for being permanently removed from the platform, right. um, despite just, wait, I mean, and I remember watching a show on a daily basis back then, and I mean, you could find a YouTube violation multiple times in every single episode that he had, and I was always quite surprised which ones they decided to actually, you know, flag him on. Um, and it became a running joke with him in his show about like, oh, we're gonna get suspended this time, or oh, we're gonna get a strike this time, and, and you know, he never actually got permanently removed from the platform though. And, and I, I think as you pointed out, is very true, he's, um, benefited greatly from YouTube's offhand approach to him. And then his channel eventually got so large that it's questionable whether or not actually fully removing him from the platform would really make that much of a dent in his bottom line anymore. Right, right. I mean, like you said, like he had four strikes in one year. Now, people listening are probably, you know, and I know you explained it, they didn't overlap, but, you know, three strikes uh, on YouTube's policy and you're supposed to be gone for good. The channel's taken down, that's it. Mm -hmm. But Crowder would would play the game like he knew exactly like because because your your strikes expire after a certain amount of time. And so he would just be very careful um, about what content he would upload uh, when and where because he has multiple channels, too. Um, mm -hmm. And he was able to each and every time get around the fact that three strikes never overlapped at the same time. They were always, you know, I feel like just as one would expire, he would then go get another one, but he would mm -hmm. still be safe from getting terminated. Yes. No, that's exactly it. It's, it's sort of a whack-a-mole game with him that he was playing. And, you know, to this day, he's still on the platform. And uh, despite repeated uh, of flagrant violations of YouTube policies on a constant daily basis, um, almost taunting them at times to do it. Uh, they never have. And uh, he's became so big that, you know, uh, I think uh, working on sort of non YouTube platforms, Rumble, and then also his own, um, you know, personal mug club plat platform um, sort of insulated him away from that. But it's important to remember that, like, he managed to build that audience through using YouTube's own algorithm, as you pointed out earlier, to do. So it became this sort of mutually beneficial relationship that then turned into him being so large that YouTube really couldn't do anything about it anymore. Right. And if you're not sure if the YouTube algorithm is really, uh, I guess you can say, to blame for Steven Crowder's rise, or if you're on the other end, you know, uh, YouTube's algorithm is to credit for Steven Crowder's rise. We'll, we'll get to that in just a minute. Cause I, I am like, like it's, it's not, it's no longer just like, Oh, it obviously must have helped him. Right. Like I would say, uh, we can pretty much guarantee that that is what led and even, and not even like, Oh, it helped him with his rise. The algorithm without a doubt, um, continue to the, continues to this day, bring an audience to him. And we have his, you know, his, his view metrics on a, another platform to compare it to. And we know that he's not, you know, he's not like, this isn't like Steven Crowder's hardcore fans are traveling all over the place to find him. No, one platform clearly was pushing him in front of people. Um, because if that was yeah. the case, their views on two separate, his views on two separate platforms would be pretty close to being, uh, you know, uh, equal if this was like his hardcore fan base following him around on both places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, he was really good at, I think, seeing that the writing was going to come on the wall eventually for him. And, uh, you know, he was smart to diversify and to switch over to Rumble and to have his own personal, um, his own sort of personal streaming platform with uh, my club. And um, he's pretty well insulated now. So, Right. We'll get a little bit more into Rumble in a second, but um, let's let's now turn to, I guess, the beginning of his year, right? Would be, 
um, you know, he's this huge YouTuber, um, and suddenly his contract is up. Now I don't think a lot of people realized he was he had a contract with like an independent like what right he, he there was some like independent like right wing media group that had him under contract that he was technically making his his content for which I don't think most people even really realized because mm-hmm. it was all under Steven Crowder's brand, right? I don't think he ever really like I know at one point he he might have been under the Blaze, but then this was a completely separate organization, right? Or or was this the Blaze he was with? I can't recall now. I believe it was the blaze which uh ended and i'm not entirely sure the terms that it ended on because it was you know we have no access beyond what they say right so i i know that he was saying that changes were going to be coming to him at the end of 2022 and um his contract with blaze ended and i'm not entirely sure if it ended under good or bad terms but it was terminated somehow and it was always a weird relationship because he was his own brand who was producing his own content but it was also being placed on the blazes platform as well um so what exactly the relationship was i'm not entirely sure but you know they, they had they at least had a system in which they were working together right it was weird because like i don't recall seeing like the blazes like insignia or any th- sort of branding on crowder's content um, not on the youtube channel no yeah, it was all. I mean, I don't think. Uh, like I said, I I couldn't even recall if it was a, if it was a a completely secondary media group, and I was confusing them because I know I was reading that like he got you know he received offers from other groups, and I guess maybe I was conflating the two stories. Um, but yeah, there was like nothing to really connect it to. But then then this gets out. Now I don't remember now. I I knew when it was going on. This was like the the big story when this was going down. The the infighting in conservative media when um Steven Crowder uh went at it with the Daily Wire because they they dared to offer him like tens of millions of dollars, right? 50, like so- 50 billion dollars. <laughs> My yeah. god, so much money. So much yeah. money. I would have listened. I would have, if I was Crowder, I'd have taken that fifty million, easy peasy. It's not even a question. I like yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> I, I, I think it would be pretty easy for me too. And you got to remember, I mean, this is fifty million dollars. Imagine that that bully you had in high school, fifty million dollars now being given to that person, and that that's that's what the situation was. I I truly uh, cannot believe that. Um... <laughs> <laughs> that he turned down the 50 million and not only did he turn it down he went to war with them over it like he he released like uh, uh secretly recorded conversations with them what was his biggest gripe again that like there was going to be some sort of clause in the contract where if he didn't create uh like hit certain like it wasn't even like oh your your content has to hit this many views it was just like no you had to like make content to a certain schedule like most working people have to do they have set hours or uh they have um you know a a quota to hit or whatever and just it was something really low too that like he's still gonna take it off like multiple months in full out of the year uh and he was angry over that because if he didn't hit that quota they would have like deducted like a couple of million out of his fifty million dollar contract, or something like that. Yeah, I mean, I uh, I try to make it a policy of never saying anything nice or reasonable about the Daily Wire, um, and it's very hard to do in this situation because Crowder's reaction was so erratic from the outside. Um, I watched this live, and you know, Crowder had gone dark um, around Christmas in 2022, and that's not totally uncommon from what I remember from him. You would take a few weeks off. Um, and then just sort of came back out of nowhere in January of 2023, um, claiming that some right wing platform, unnamed, had offered him a contract. And I think he even used the term slave contract. Um, they had offered this to him and he was turning it down because this platform was going to be enforcing the dictates of big tech. And then he had this whole like stop the big con thing. Um, well, anyway, Jeremy Boring, CEO of uh, the Daily Wire, called Crowder's Bluff, and I think it was even the next day, published his own video in which it was about a 30 or 40 minute video, if I remember correctly, detailing through the contract that was offered to Stephen Crowder by the Daily Wire, which included the $50 million, which included, you know, a, a, a 
totally normal part of most contracts, which is, you know, you produce content and we give you money in <laughs> basic exchange. Um, pretty loose standards, a lot of money, a lot of vacation time. Um, and, you know, all of this, you know, dictates a big tech thing. Boring's contention was that, you know, if Steven Crowder's removed from a big tech platform like YouTube, um, that he would have to share some of the lost costs with the Daily Wire as the right. people who are giving him money. This is basically it. And so Steven Crowder turns this into a massive fight. Uh, well, I mean, after that happens, all of the Daily Wire podcasters um, take the knives out for Crowder and start attacking him. Candace Owens, I remember being the most, you know, violent. She called him a, a socialist at one point. Um, and said some other, you know, pretty horrible the things. Horror. The horror. <laughs> I, I did, yeah. Ben Shapiro called him nasty. Like, it was just this very, like, you know, extremely public, humiliating fight that, you know, um, I think we can all safely say now Stephen Crowder very decisively lost. Now, I, 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 I forgot about the, the thing about it being, like, if his channel was demonetized, he would have to take a hit. Because, like, we just discussed the guy was... Uh, very good at maneuvering around those strikes and mm -hmm. and um, keeping his channel going. And, I mean, if the Daily Wires got their content on YouTube regularly and ostensibly they're monetized because mm -hmm. they clearly make money off of YouTube because otherwise they wouldn't be using it. Mm -hmm. It seems like Crowder. I mean, and, and like it's not like the Daily Wire content is like rainbows and unicorns compared to oh, Crowder's. Yeah. No, I was going to say, I mean, it, it, we're going to talk about, you know, the the, the um, horrible content that YouTube allows to spew on its platform. I mean, it's really hard to find it much worse than Matt Walsh's Daily Wire show. Um, and that goes for the rest of the podcast are there, too. No, it, it's horrible, horrible, horrible content that they spew on the platform, often in violation of YouTube policies. Um, we could argue about whether or not Crowder's worse or not. I think at this point we're sort of splitting hairs between all very bad people. But, um, yeah, this is sort of the very... You know, lose. And, you know, it was a negotiable contract. This wasn't a final contract, as Boring made clear. In addition, just like one final little, you know, twist of the knife that Crowder did was that he secretly recorded a conversation he had with Jeremy Boring and then played it on his, um, I think he was streaming it on YouTube at the time. And uh, I think that was a little too far for, for people. And, um, you know, he just uh, very, you know, clearly got checkmated then when they called the club. You know, it was interesting too. Like you mentioned, uh, of all the people who went after him the hardest, it was like Candace Owens. Like they each, but they each like put out like uh, you know Wall Shapiro, Jeremy Boring, like you said, of like the the the, the head of uh, uh, the Daily Wire. You know, they they each put out their responses to him, and a lot of them were generous to him actually, being like really respectful still after all of that. I guess because they wanted to come out looking like the bigger person, and they obviously did because he looked terrible coming out of this. But yes, Candace yeah. Candace Owens like was was pushing that there was something she had on him or something like that. It was yeah. very weird. Yeah, it was the she would you know it's the way that Candace does it. You know, there's a whole separate style that she has where she you know. Oh, I hear rumors. I heard something that someone said. You know, I I'm just asking questions. It's sort of this, you know, typical right wing conspiracy theorist, you know, style of talking. Um, and she did this a lot with him. And you know, it was supposed to be very spicy and sensational. And then there was the whole thing where she was talking about sending a cease and desist letter because he was threatening her. And it was just this very petty, gross back and forth on these public platforms with these two people for, um, you know an end that at least I didn't really see at the time, except for I did enjoy, you know, sort of watching my, you know, the two people that I watch pretty, the two organizations I watch pretty closely battling it out very publicly. Right. Now I'm, I'm assuming at some point uh, as uh, Crowder's doing all this and burning his bridges, um, I'm, I, he then signs a deal with rumble. Mm -hmm. So he does have an official deal at Rumble, right? He didn't just like, because I didn't think he did, because I, I can't picture him doing that with with him being a commodity. Um, like he, like Rumble signed him to a specific like creator deal or something. Yeah, from what I've gathered, it was signed in, I believe, March of this year. And it's to stream exclusive content on Rumble. The specifics of this deal, I don't really entirely know. I'm not sure if anyone really knows. We don't really have much more beyond what Stephen will say on a show and just sort of press releases. Um, Rumble, just a couple of weeks ago, um, was talking about how they were, you know, making money off of his content, off of subscribers that were coming to them, you know, through his content. Um, 
I don't know if that's true or not. I mean, I just it's just simply reporting that I read. Uh, but they at least have sort of Stephen went from the blaze and then destroyed his bridges with the Daily Wire and then moved over to Rumble. And um, that seems to be where he's settled right now. So what what is his deal with how he's posting on YouTube right now? Because I noticed he doesn't post as much as he used to. Like there'll be like just like empty like time periods on his channel, right? Like he he's not really as active. Like he he disappeared. Like I know you said he takes his Christmas break or whatever, but he had disappeared for a long portion after the whole Daily Wire spat, didn't he? Yeah, I believe he got suspended in the spring for. Um... Uh, uh, Alex Jones hosting his show, uh, which is a whole right. separate issue with him right now. Right. Very close relationship between get into. Uh, and then he takes a, I think it's almost a month off in the summer, which he has done in the past. Um, but I remember talking to one of my colleagues when that happened. I was like, I mean, his entire career and personal life are imploding and he's taking a vacation. It, to me, it seemed a little strange, but um, he did come back and, you know, he's back now. Um, he'll often do a thing when we, so if we watch him on YouTube, which we often do, um, and if he's going to get to a bit of content that, you know, he knows will have a very good chance of triggering um, a strike, he'll sort of blank out that part of it with some, you know, background music playing or something in a blank screen. And then we'll, you know, while the rest of it's actually happening at Rumble. And I think it's his way of sort of taunting YouTube and it's his way of, you know, being cheeky. Um, and that's sort of the status of his, you know, YouTube platform right now. So he's got this, this, uh, this multi-platform thing going on. I feel like that spat from the Daily Wire greatly, uh, you know, sort of hurt his cred with, I guess, a portion of the right wing audience because um, he looked bad at that. And um, then he's got this actual personal issue come up. Now, I'm not sure <laughs> if this is what Candace Owens is alluding to, but at some point, this like security camera, f this is after the Daily Wire feud, mm -hmm. but at some point, like early summer, a security camera footage from what seems like his house, like in his backyard mm -hmm. or something, leaks showing him basically yelling and berating his pregnant wife mm -hmm. for something like, what was it? Like like her not walking the dog and then she wanted to yeah. like take the car and he wouldn't let her. Uh, it was bizarre. And again, I, we talked about this before. You know, generally... Uh, I don't just randomly bring up personal life of anyone I'm talking about, but in this specific case, Crowder's personal life became a huge part of the story of his career because, yes. uh, you know, other right wingers brought this up as the feuds continued and also Steven Crowder sort of integrated uh, this whole thing into his own segments because he had to address them because it became such big news in, in that mm -hmm. world. And then, uh, but also an extra to all of that is that Crowder made his whole career early on penning these like op eds for Fox News mm -hmm. about how, uh, you know, it, it like important it is or essential it is to be married and Christian and have a, a like a, a classic Christian marriage and 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 uh, a life like that and like became, he was like the married guy like that was his whole shtick mm -hmm. yeah no you're absolutely right and it all really got quite shattered pretty suddenly um when this video came out and um yeah i mean it, it's it's incredibly disturbing uh video to watch uh, i find um he's acting with a level of cruelty towards his wife that's um not really something I'm capable of grasping. Um, and I'm grateful for not being able to grasp that. And uh, it really sort of destroyed this image of the nice Christian married young guy that he had been cultivating for over 10 years at that point. Um, and then it's sort of coming in conjunction with him announcing his ongoing divorce from his wife at the same time. And, you know, like you said, also, I mean, I, I, I don't like delving into personal lives of people, especially public figures and especially people that I, um, research and monitor. Um, that being said, um, Steven Crowder has made a career out of making the lives of other people his business. Um, you know, 
random school teachers <laughs> or, um, you know, just sort of random people who will post on Twitter or on TikTok or something and loves destroying their lives and loves attacking them for who they are. And um, we now see through this evidence that the evidence that came out of that video that, you know, Steven Crowder is a fraud. And uh, I think that it's perfectly reasonable for his audience to ask uh, if he is the kind of authority figure on morals that he claims to be. Right, right. Because this this video was, it was hard to watch. It was yeah. it was very, I mean, you know, he 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 speaks to her in a way that, um, you know, I it didn't sound like this was the first time. Like it didn't sound like we we caught Crowder in a rare off, really bad moment. Like he yeah. he was using very threatening language to her, and and the tone of his voice was was quite worrisome uh yeah yeah <laughs> yeah it, it was it was real and then he 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 addressed it on his show mm-hmm. and i remember one moment really sticking out to me is you know they they have kids prior to you know this this child that his wife or ex-wife if she's not soon to be ex-wife mm-hmm. um it was pregnant with but they have children already and in the, the his his speech he like goes out of his way to like say like um don't blame my children for this. Whatever you do, don't blame my children for this. Now his kids aren't like of the age to even like hear that or know what's going on. Like they're young. Yeah. Like it really did sound like his roundabout way of saying like the kids did this to us. <laughs> like yeah. like it was weird. Yeah. It was weird. Like, no one they like no one blamed his kids. Everyone was quite clear that like he looked very bad in that video and he was no one said anything, right? Yeah. It was very weird. No, what that video confirmed to me, absolutely, and it's something that I already knew, but it's you know, always nice to see confirmation of it. Um, is that Steven Crowder is as bad of a person behind scenes as he is in front of the camera. That um, the one thing that he's not a fraud about is how um, primordial and ingrained his hateful bullying actually is. Um, that it doesn't just apply to rhetoric in front of a camera. That this is how he treats people. Um, and that was later confirmed by reporting that was coming out about how he was treating his staff, um, including his father as well. And uh, I think the image is quite clear of who Steven Crowder is. Right, right. Now, this whole thing goes on. Crowder just after addressing it, gets back into doing his content shtick. Um, and then the legal issues happen. Um, can you tell me a bit, because I'm, 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 I'm a little bit off on the timeline here. Uh, so maybe this started even before that video came out. But former staff members, including his former like co-host, who was like, this dude was like Crowder's like right hand man. I forget his name. You probably know his name. Dave Landau. Yeah. Yeah. What was it? Dave Landau. Dave Landau. Yeah. He was like his right hand man. He was the guy who, when when um you know when Sam Cedar of the Majority Report uh uh came on with uh Ethan Klein H three eight from H three H three for that impromptu debate and Crowder freaked out over it. Dave Landau is the guy who like stepped in to like verbally like be a wall to Crowder and like try to talk over everyone to like make sure Crowder didn't have to deal with the horror of speaking with Sam Cedar. Um, but like this guy like was was like his like little like his Igor to <laughs> like like yes master <laughs> like that was that was this guy and now he talks he's out there. Uh, talking about how terrible Crowder has treated him and the rest of the people at uh, Louder with Crowder, the the Stephen Crowder show. Can, can you tell me a little bit about how this all sort of started and went down? Yeah, I mean, a lot of it was sort of reporting that I was reading um, several months ago that was, you know, was, uh, a lot of it was, I, I don't recall a lot of people going on the record for any of these stories, but it would be, you know, people, ex-staffers, and um, I think even a, cur- a couple of current staffers going off the record, um, or giving unnamed quotes about the behavior that was happening in 
Steven Crowder's office. And, um, you know, it's it's sort of everything that you would have assumed by watching the, the ring video that came out between him and his wife yelling at staff. And like I said, including his father, Darren Crowder, who um, at least used to work as Steven Crowder's booker. I'm not entirely sure what their business relationship is now. But, he, you know, he at least is very often on Steven Crowder's show. Uh, you know, Steven yelling at him. Um, Steven, you know, exposing himself to staff members. Uh, in really sort of disgusting gross behavior that, you know, needless to say is entirely inappropriate for an office environment, um, that he's incredibly erratic, that he's incredibly abusive, um, that he's a very scary person to work for. And, uh, you know, Dave Lando very suddenly left the show. I, I, there wasn't even a, a farewell. It was just, he just wasn't there. And I was sort of expecting him to come back. Like, I don't know if he was sick, but he's a stand-up comedian. Like maybe he's, you know, doing a tour. I don't know, but he just never came back. And then, you know, there were sort of surfacey things I was seeing on Twitter, like people defending Dave Landau, or, and I wasn't entirely sure what was going on. And then he popped up on, on a podcast, I can't remember which one right now, um, several months ago, sort of just going through all of this and saying, like, you know, I'm not going to get too in-depth about it because, you know, I don't want to talk bad about my former my former employer. But, you know, needless to say, it was sort of an abusive, really bad environment. And, um, you know, like I said before, it's just, it's just more confirmation of who he is. Like, Stephen Crowder is a bad person. He's a, he's a bad, bully, hateful, abusive person. And, and he, what you see on camera about that is who he is behind camera. Right, right. And then there was this story um, where, where he, uh, a few ex-staffers came out uh, anonymously, I'm, I, I believe, to talk about like the, the NDA, they, the uh, NDA that he had them sign, the non-disclosure agreement, or he wanted them to sign or something like that. Like he went like complete, and you know, listen, NDAs aren't that um, out of bounds for an employer to have signed, but apparently this was something that like came after the like these were people already working for him, but he had a meltdown over what just happened transpired transpired over this year, and he came to them like people who he's been working with and was like basically like sign this or you're out of here, and like if you sign it and you tell people anything. We're gonna come after you for like a hundred thousand dollars or something like that. He just like went like completely off the wall. Yeah, and I think it's good to to you know say again now, like rewind a little bit and remember what Steven Crowder was saying about this supposed horrible contract the Daily Wire was offering him and about how you know how constraining it was on creative talent and how you know you know silencing it was and so forth. And, and you know yeah, so we see him doing this. I mean like okay, I mean. When, when we do the stuff that you and I do, like, you know, looking for hypocrisy in conservative media, so, you know, you, you could spend all day doing nothing but that. So there's really, you know, I don't want to go too far down. You know, there's no point in going too far down that rabbit hole. But it is an indication of the kind, the kind of person that he is, that um, if he's, you know, this dead set on ensuring silence among, you know, his staffers or former staffers, uh, especially when there's this many rumors and people going on record talking about abuse in his office place. I mean, that that's indicative of something. Right. Right. No, absolutely. And there was this extra bizarre story about him. Um, it, it, it was it came out with those people who uh, talked about that NDA they didn't want to sign. But uh, he would go around and these were now sexual misconduct allegations. But mm -hmm. specifically, they would say he would like go around and like smack people's. Gen genital area and it was called sack tapping when you like you know and it was like a thing that he would do did you heard of, you heard this right I did. No, I did. Yeah. no and like like i said earlier you know the high school bully that you knew that's who this person is this is what this, is what this kind of behavior is this is the kind of person that he is and then of course in may he responds to a lot of these things on his show by doing a skit in which he, you know, exposes himself to a staffer. And this is his, this is his ha ha funny way of responding to like pretty serious sexual misconduct allegations against him. Um, you know, I, I guess he's not taking it very seriously. Did um, it, it, uh, you know, is he is he like what what is he posting? Like what is? Let's move over actually to the the. I'm going to talk more in depth about Rumble now. We don't know, like you said, we don't know too much about the deal, but you had. Uh, a very interesting piece come out uh, last month uh, in Media Matters called uh, Stephen Crowder's Empire of Hate Collapses. And, you know, you, you run through, like, the issues that he um, that he's had. I see that Jonah Goldberg even called him an untalented buffoon. And if you have 
uh, <laughs> one untalented buffoon calling you an untalented buffoon. You must yeah. really be an untalented buffoon. But um, in the piece, you you what was revealing to me as you run through this all is basically, and I alluded to this early on, but let's talk about it more in depth now. And that's exactly how he's doing on Rumble. Um, you know, on on YouTube, like I mentioned, he was YouTube's uh, golden boy in the political category. There, I don't think there is any solo singular political streamer or channel in the politics category that has more subscribers than Crowder. Um, I, I could be wrong, but I, I'm pretty sure he's like the king of politics on YouTube. Yeah. Um, and when he goes to rumble you would assume that if these were his you know his hardcore fans his regulars his faithful watchers they would come with him to rumble oh well, you know if he's posting his content there now i'm not assuming it's going to be one to one but a decent percentage you would assume but that's not what we're seeing right yeah i mean it's not just that he's posting on rumble he's telling people on YouTube to go to Rumble. He's telling them to like stop watching on YouTube and to go to Rumble instead. So he's sort of advertising for Rumble in that way. And uh, you know what we see throughout, and I we, I grafted in that piece that you mentioned, is that his viewership on Rumble is just sort of very markedly and precipitously declined, um, all the way from uh, March to early August. Um, he would have a few spikes in there. Um, I think you know twice in which he broke two million views in that period of time. Um, but beyond that, it's a very clear drop that he's been undergoing. Um, and it's sort of interesting that this is all, you know, as we were saying, as we spent this whole previous time talking, not happening in a vacuum. It's happening in the context of his extremely public fight with the Daily Wire, all these personal scandals coming out, like a real sense that he's been rejected by the larger conservative media establishment. Um, Stephen Crowder was an extremely famous, popular uh, conservative podcaster for a very long time. I would see him on other people's shows. I would see people talk about him. Um, he would make the rounds. And I don't see that anymore. Um, I see him getting incredibly more fringy, especially as he's been having this ongoing relationship with Alex Jones that got formalized recently. Um, and that seems to be the area that he's going into. And it's not unheard of for uh, you know someone to get uh, rebuked by the larger establishment and to sort of go in a more fringy direction. Um, it, I'm not going to say it's unique, but it's at least somewhat strange of Steven Crowder's size and the caliber that he was. This sort of, as you were saying, you know, this huge YouTube podcaster, possibly the largest political one on the entire platform, um, really just having this complete uh, disintegration of his viewership. Right. And what's interesting is I'm looking over and like there's obviously like specific videos that perform better on rumble than on youtube mm -hmm. like for example he spoke with tucker carlson of course tucker carlson's gonna do great on rumble where on youtube it's just like another video for crowder mm -hmm. but like he's posting so much less on youtube um and he's posting so much more on rumble and there isn't that much of a besides like aside from those videos, those specific videos. Also, I noticed that in the past like month or so, it seems like Rumble must have been really pushing him because his yeah. content is uh, there. I guess they want their money's worth. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know a huge amount about Rumble's business model, um, but just from someone who spends unfortunately a lot of time on Rumble for my for my job, uh, Crowder's content is always pushed very high to the top that I always say. All right. Now, do we have, we don't know any details on Mug Club, right? In terms of like, like that's something private that like private subscription metrics, like we don't know anything about because Mug Club, people don't know that's his like his subscription membership service where he like, mm -hmm. does he even do anything for those people anymore? <laughs> I, I honestly don't know. Like, you know, it's, I, I, uh, it used to be that, you know, you subscribe and you get like all the sort of extra content, but I'm not entirely sure what's extra content on Monk Club versus what's just going on at Rumble right now. I don't know if anyone knows the answer to that. I assume you subscribe, you do. Um, I remember it being kind of expensive though. So, you know, it's kind of a pricey subscription to have. Um, and so far as I'm aware, no, I don't really know if we have any access to what's going on. Those are sort of just internal business records that he has. Right. Now, 
What do you think, uh, like, you've been monitoring Crowder for a while now. What do you, like, what is his, well, first of all, we should actually mention, before we do that, we should mention, like, his content. Because I've noticed that, like, you know, as he as he continues to do his whole, you know, his 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 show and his clips, I feel like he he's oddly like going more and more into like for someone who 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 rails so much against like gender identity, the guy is constantly playing dress up and doing and, and, and dressing in drag. And like, I know so many people mention that it's so obvious. It's almost impossible to not mention that when discussing Crowder, but I feel like he's like really ramping that up even more to the point where like, it, it's so clear. It's like his fallback. Like he doesn't like, he's he like, it's, it's so like such basic, like humor. Like it's not even like well thought out. It's just like, Oh, Crowder put on a dress again. I think it's returning to the old hits, you know, like, I think he's someone who is experiencing uh, a bit of a crisis, um, possibly several at the same time, and he's returning to what he knows. And, you know, I, this is not a quantitative statement. This is just my personal assessment of it, um, having watched him for a while. But like, I see a man who's flailing, um, who doesn't know what the future holds, who had a lot of security and doesn't anymore, uh, both personally and professionally. Um, and who doesn't have a very clear trajectory of what the next few years looks like. And um, I see someone who's just trying to do everything they possibly can to stay relevant in a world that's increasingly pushing him away. Right. Oh, here, I didn't, I never realized this. So Crowder's mug club actually goes through rumble, but like directly, Mm. like rumble actually gets paid when you, or at least it seems that way, because the Mug Club now lives on the Rumble.com domain name. Uh, that's interesting. I didn't realize that at first. Because mm-hmm. you just have to go through yeah. like his louderwithcrowder.com website. It was like a website. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Yeah. So interesting. The is pretty close. Right. And I'm looking at some of the videos on there. Um, I mean, most popular video is March 20th, 2023. Um, cause they do, they're showing you like, uh, the most popular, um, his debate coverage did less than half what his most popular video did. And that's the third popular, most popular video. Ooh, this guy's taking a, a, a tumble on rumble. <laughs> <laughs> that's really good. Yeah. Um, I mean, and I, don't, I don't know if this is true, so I'm just saying what Steven Crowder himself says right now. So take that with a grain of salt, but this is also someone who very frequently would brag about how he had more viewers on his 2020 election stream than the three major networks did, the three, you know, CNN, MSNBC, and Fox News. Um, the so, old Elon Musk argument. It's sort of telling, <laughs> yeah, isn't it? But, uh, I don't think he, I don't know if he still brags about that anymore, but. Uh. Right, These, but the thing is, you can't, you can't like, the cable ratings and, uh, online video ratings uh view like metrics do not correlate whatsoever like no. you you click on a youtube video and play a second of it you just gave them a, a well not on youtube i think youtube is a little bit longer than a second but like on twitter i know you, yeah. you watch two seconds of a video and you count as a view whereas yeah, yeah. you know tv ratings when they put the ratings out there it's like how many people cumulatively watched concurrently during a specific minute of television that's a lot more specific and stringent of a measurement than uh online <laughs> metrics that's certainly not a very good comparison to make <laughs> right right so we you... you know he's chasing, oh, that, chasing, an old, he's chasing an old high that isn't there anymore i suppose right yeah. So where do you where do you think uh what, what do you think Crowder ends up doing for here do you think this is like he just settles into this nice little career with uh, his, um, you know, his uh, his hardcore audience that's stuck around. Sort of like, I guess, what Alex Jones is doing, where they no longer make any news, no real relevancy. Like, I'm not saying they're not popular. They're probably going to make tons of money. They still do. Mm-hmm. Um, they have lots of viewers, but they're not really, like, in the conversation anymore. No one really discusses them in the way they did when they were at the the peak of their careers at the top of their game yeah well yeah i experience the past few years has taught me to be careful about predicting the future i have no idea what's going to happen um 
Tucker Carlson firing from Fox News in April really changed what I think was possible in conservative media. Um, so I don't really know. I, I do think, though, that uh, the Alex Jones comparison is a, is a really good one to make because um, also just Crowder is becoming more of an Alex Jonesy figure. I mean, like, literally, they're working together um, now. You know, they have a lot of um, Jones comes on the show a lot. They have like Jones is like technically part of Mug, Mug Club. There's a, a way in which they're sort of fusing. Um, and that's sort of an interesting comparison to make for that reason, that Crowder is, certainly seems to be getting a lot more fringy in his rhetoric and his content and, and the overall business model he had. And the big difference, though, is like Alex Jones is significantly older than Stephen Crowder, too. And um, it's one thing to sort of settle in, you know, middle to latter middle age after having this long career like Alex Jones has and be like, OK, this is where I'm going to sit. Whereas Stephen Crowder should still be rising. And um, he's certainly plateauing right now. And uh, it's hard to see how someone can personally sort of just sit back and be like, I'm going to coast out the rest of my career doing this when he's in the position that he's in right now. Um, so I'd be a little surprised by that. What I expect to see is a ramping up of his extremism, a ramping up of his more ridiculous, crazy antics. Um, you know, he's someone who desperately needs attention all the time, good or bad. He needs to have attention. And I think he's going to do everything he possibly can to get it. Whether or not that works is yet to be seen. Personally, my guess would be that I think Steven Crowder is, you know, days as being um, a very influential figure in right-wing media are over, though. Right. Yeah, I, I I think that uh, that's pretty uh, accurate in terms of uh, Jones uh, and probably mm -hmm. Crowder. I guess we'll see though. Uh, yeah, they'll they'll continue, I guess, to uh, team up and and try to give each other rub a little relevancy off of each other. Whatever's left, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's still so amazing to me that this guy could have taken. And like you said, he's younger than uh, Jones, too. So, like, you know, Jones probably only has a limited time left doing this before he, you know, uh, moves to uh, uh, retirement. Whereas Crowder could be technically could have had a much longer career. Can't believe he didn't take that Daily Wire money. It's just that's it's so stunning to me and with that whole lineup of people behind him. That would have been it would have he he really I don't it, and, and I, I, mean, feel, I feel like the Daily Wire crew has never been more, uh, you know, it sucks that this is the case, but they've never been more relevant. It's the thing that makes me, the, I've been at Media Matters for a little over four years now, and the thing that makes me the most sad is how big the Daily Wire has gotten in that span of time. Um, they're a horrifying outlet, um, incredibly powerful, very big, um, producing some of the worst stuff that comes out of conservative media on a consistent basis. Uh, they're absolutely vile, horrifying network. And um, with the exception of Fox News, it's hard for me to think of another single conservative organization that is as powerful as they are right now. And Stephen Crowder said no to them very publicly and in an extremely grandiose way. And I don't really see those bridges getting rebuilt again. Um, and I can't speculate as to why he did it. I suppose it's something only he knows. Um, my guess is that it was probably a mistake, though. Right. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a pretty good guess. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, uh, Jason Campbell, senior researcher for Media Matters for America, uh, the Stephen Crowder expert. Uh, th thank you so much for joining me tonight on the show. Um, it, what do you uh, – I don't know if you uh, have anything you want to uh, – uh, you, you can tease what's coming up, what you got in the works. But if so, feel free here. Also, let people know where they can find you online. The floor is yours. Whatever you want to promote, go ahead. Oh, thank you. Well, I, uh, the only thing I would say is that I certainly hope that uh, the days of talking about Stephen Crowder are coming to an end <laughs> and we can all stop mentioning his name. That would make me very, very happy. Um, and then beyond that, yeah, I'm still on Twitter for as long as it continues to last. Uh, we'll, we'll, see how that, we'll see how that goes. But um, my handle is at Jason S. Campbell. There we go. Uh, Jason yeah. Campbell, everyone, uh, thank you so much. Have a great night. Thank you so much. You as well. Bye. Bye. All right, folks. That is not the end of our show here, of course. We're going to go to the second half of the show where I will read your super chats. I will, will read your uh, twish, Twitch chats. Uh I will take your phone calls. That's right. I take calls. 
anything you want to talk about, whether you want to talk about something going on uh, in the news that you are interested in, whether you are, especially if you are someone who disagrees with me on something, if you're a right winger, a libertarian, uh, whatever, and you want to debate with me and argue with me and yell at me, I will be taking those calls. And listen, if you are someone who's going to debate with me and yell at me, let me know because I will I will move you to the front of because <laughs> I am sick. I'm a sick individual. Um, I love it. Uh, let's go to the second half of the show where we do all that. But first, patreon.com slash Matt Binder. It was uh, the first of the month this past weekend. As you all know, that's when Patreon charges people. And that's when we, without uh, fail, every month lose people who have to cancel due to, uh, you know, financial issues or their card gets declined. So now more than ever to support this show, patreon.com slash Matt Binder. That's the best place to monetarily support the show if you'd like to do so. Patreon.com slash Matt Binder. Also subscribe to the channel at youtube.com slash Matt Binder. You can drop a super chat. I will read all super chats in the second half of the show. Uh, if you want to become a YouTube member, that's like a paid membership, and you don't prefer doing Patreon, you could do it on YouTube too. Just click that join button up top, become a YouTube member. Um, also, if you're an Amazon Prime subscriber, uh, connect your Amazon account to your Twitch account, and you get a free Twitch Prime subscription every month to give to your favorite creator at no extra cost to you. You can do that and give it to me at twitch.tv slash mattbinder. And if you're not already following me on there, do that. Uh, follow me on Twitter, a.k.a. X, uh, at Matt Binder, Blue Sky Matt Binder, Threads Matt Binder, anywhere and everywhere. Just search Matt Binder. You'll find me, doomedcast.com for the podcast version of the show. Leave a review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify if you haven't already done so. Um, check out my other show, scameconomy.com. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Uh, let's go to the second half of the show. Uh, you can, again, super chats and Twitch chats, uh, paid Twitch chats, I should say. I read. So you can do those. Call-ins. Open up Skype. Type in Doomed Live. It'll pop up. Doomed Live. I think it's the official username is like Doomed Live underscore one. Because Skype like just gives you one after you like sign up with an email, so it's uh, just search Doomed Live, you'll find it. Um, but before, oh yeah, 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 I can't, I can't leave, I can't leave the Patreons and the new YouTube members hanging. I want to shout them out to let them know how grateful I am when they do such a thing. Um, over on Patreon. Let me give a shout out to the latest patron subscribers, and they are Hillary M, Matthew F, R Jenis, Trevor T, Raymond M, and Thrillo. Thank you all so much for becoming patrons at patreon.com slash Bender. Oh, people already calling in. Hold on, I gotta transition to the second half of the show. Hold on. And also let me thank the latest YouTube members. Um Yazo and Jeff in Southern T NY. Thank you so much for becoming patrons. Uh really appreciate it. Not patrons, that's YouTube members. Oh boy. And then over on Twitch, we just got uh, Twinkle resubscribed from one month at tier one, subscriber for six months, and Don James sixteen seventy six resubscribed for one month at tier one, subscriber for fourteen months. Thank you so much, and also Mississippi Villain subscribe with Prime. Thank you all so much for your support. And now, give me a quick few. Let me, like, give me a, a a minute, less than a minute, to refill my drink. We're going to the second half of the show. If you're watching live, if you're a Patreon subscriber, nothing changes for you. If you are listening to the free podcast version of this show, that's where I say I will see you all next time. 
on Doom. the show this is the second half of the live stream hold on let me pull myself up on the feed here oh, no wait where am i oh. all right let's start taking calls got people calling in already uh let's go to the phones uh, uh everyone just hung up <laughs> oh that always happens uh all right, let's take this call. Hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, hello. Yeah, this is Osama. Hey, Osama, how you doing? What was it to talk about? Uh, good. How are you? Uh, yeah. Um, I missed your show, but I saw you were online, so I tried and it worked. Uh, there but, you go. You, what are we talking about? Yeah. We don't, got, we don't got to talk about the show. Get by whatever you want. I know. I know. I know. I was just saying, uh, are, I feel like all of the usual big names are on decline, right? Like Ben Shapiro isn't getting the numbers he used to, and he isn't as influential. Jordan Peterson has just gone insane. Well, ben, ben Shapiro is still pretty big. I mean, because the whole Daily Wire network is still pretty big. I mean, it's big, but is it new? Like, is it bringing in new people like it used to? I mean, they're they're apparently making more money than ever. I mean, they're, they're are growing their subscription audience. They're big. Uh, Daily Wire is really big. Uh, I, I guess that's true. But are they, like, big because of a dedicated audience or big because they're bringing in young people or new people? Mm, or... I don't know. I guess that it could be either. They have a dedicated audience bringing in new people, probably a little bit of both. I don't know. No, okay. And Tim Pool isn't, right? He isn't growing. I mean, he's... I I I haven't checked into whether he's growing. I mean, he certainly has a really big audience. I mean, yeah, he has a big audience. Uh, uh Stephen Crowder, of course, is just gone. Yeah, Dave Rubin uh... wasn't relevant before right. for a while, right? <laughs> right, it's been a while for Dave Rubin. And then you have these little freaks who are just doing their shows that no one talks about. Like, what's the guy's name? The guy with the big head. Uh, Steve Gorka. Oh, uh, Sebastian Gorka. Sebastian Gorka. <laughs> <laughs> Do you watch not even a show? I I have tuned in every now and then. I know, yeah, they, they are big, they're big <laughs> fans. They're big fans. <laughs> it's, it's a running gag. I don't know why they keep... I don't know how they don't get it, but I guess... Uh, uh, yeah, other than that, um, uh, did you watch the whole, or did you follow the whole CM Punk thing? 
I did follow the CM Punk thing. CM Punk has been released from AEW after uh, an investigation into what transpired backstage. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure what At happened. The, uh, all in event. Yeah. Uh, someone, some people say he lunged at Tony Khan. I, I don't know what the hell uh, happens in in this year. How how, how this really play out? But the, just the mental image of CM Punk diving at Tony Khan. All right, <laughs> right, right. Uh, it might not be fun for them, but it's really funny for me. And just thinking about that. Uh, um, but yeah, uh, you didn't watch All Out though, did you? I, I, I did. Uh, no, I didn't watch the whole thing. I watched the via clips. Like, I know oh. what happened. I know what happened. The last match was really good. Right. Orange Cassidy. That, was that the uh, the Orange Cassidy? Yeah. Right. I have, I have to check. I have to check. Uh, there's a few I want to check out in full. Yeah. That one you probably should. I think it was the best match out of all the three pay-per-views that happened this past week. Including all in, personally, I think. Right. Uh, but yeah, uh, I guess uh, that's about it. I could, uh, uh, yeah, I uh, I could uh, give a quick uh, <laughs> Pakistan update. Right now, there's nothing fun happening. It's just. Uh, between governments, between like our elections, we have interim governments that are meant to last for only a little bit so that the next government can move in. But our army has uh, sort of done something where uh, we might have that for like uh, a few more months. And now it's just like there's no politics going on, it's just misery because they're enacting policies that are like I guess you can call them austerity or uh, whatever. And the interim government is doing stuff they shouldn't be able to. And it's just uh, uh, the prices and everything are increasing and it's just uh, people are getting more and more desperate. Right. That's basically uh, what's, uh, what's happening, if anyone's interesting. Imran Khan is still in jail. I think, yeah, he is still in jail. But that's about it. Well, uh, you're, okay. you're, 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 you're going to come on the show. Uh, yeah, but that's about that's weeks. about the uh, uh, yeah. I, I message you. I think you said next Tuesday, right? Uh, uh, it is going to be next Tuesday, right? Yeah. Wow, time flew. Yeah, you're going to be <laughs> on. Uh, why don't you give everyone a little bit of a, a, a quick thirty second teaser about what we're going to be talking about next episode? Uh, uh, it's it's about uh, the more about the. Baloch, uh, Bal- Balochistan's history with Pakistan and uh, the current, uh, I guess some people wouldn't call it a genocide. I call, I still call it a genocide because to me, it's the genocide is a process. It isn't like, oh, you just uh, end up killing people in the end and that's genocide. To me, it's the entire process of, I guess, erasure of a people or trying to erase people, erase a people, anyone, any group for uh, their ethnic identity, I guess. Now we can include... Uh, trans people as well, which isn't really an ethnic identity because they're trying to remove their identities as well. So it, it, it's not, uh, to me, genocide isn't necessarily that, uh, oh, you killed a, a bunch of people. Like, that's just mass death. We have a word for that already. That's a massacre or whatever other, other word you want to use. To me, genocide is the entire process of uh, uh, othering someone and trying to erase their entire identity, whether that ends up killing them or just removing their identity from the face of the earth. Like, uh, uh, for example, what Israel is doing to Palestine, where they even refuse to acknowledge that Palestinians exist and Palestine is a thing. They call them Arabs. Uh, but yeah, that's what it's going to be about. Great. I'm looking forward to it. This is going to be uh, something where I'm uh, taken to school uh, because I have little to no knowledge of this topic so i'm gonna look forward to asking yeah. you all about it we're gonna um you know a little bit of a uh international politics episode of the show and uh it seems like it's gonna be something very important to get on people's radar because they'll certainly be coming on my radar uh yeah let me know the time as well message me when you wanna yes start. i will message you we will uh 
uh, have it all set up for next Tuesday. Looking forward to it. Osama, take care. Have a great night. You have a good one. Bye. All right. Let's go back to the phones. Hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, hello, I'm Matthew. Matthew Pender. Yes, who is on the line? Well, it's your favorite president, if you didn't recognize me. I didn't. <laughs> who, who is it? <laughs> your favorite president, President Trump. Oh, Trump, you're not sounding very, very Trump-y. Is the, is the oppression off? Should I just give up and get out the get the hell out of here or something? Uh, could could you call back as Robert Kennedy? <laughs> uh, I'm sure I could. I'm sure I could if you'd like. Absolutely. <laughs> Have a good night, Matt. Take care, Mr. Trump. <laughs> the the Trump the Trump impression wasn't doing it for me tonight. It didn't sound right. It just didn't sound right. Something was off there. Uh. All right. Getting a call. This is not from the previous caller, so let's take it. Uh, hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, it's Charlie from Washington. How you doing, bud? Hey, Charlie from Washington. I'm doing good. How are you? Could I pull your uh, video feed up on the stream? Yes, please. I kind of want to show off my new shirt. Oh, cool. What's the, oh, oh the conjuring of Lucifer. Lucifer. It's sort of like a, yeah, I got another one that says, uh, it's got like Cthulhu sitting on like a throne. It says trust in God underneath it. I, okay. I bought it for Halloween and this one looks really nice. I like it. It looks cool. Me too. What uh, does it talk what, about? What was up with Mr. Trump? He sounds kind of yeah, sick. I don't know. And now Trump has called in before and he sounded very Trumpy. Yeah, what's you know? I hope he's doing okay. You know, I know he's got like, he's he's got ninety one indictments he's worried about or charges yeah, or whatever. Yeah. You know, you're, you're probably wearing on your health, man. He needs to do a few rounds of cheating on the golf course. Right now, I don't I don't usually eat on the feed. I'm not I'm not someone who does that, but I'm feeling like I, I need it's something. So I've, I I yeah I got I got a lollipop, a, a sucker, if you will. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to eat on the feed. So sorry, everyone. Um, yeah, so uh, real real quick before I get into what I want to talk about, Twitch emotes, standard reminder, you know, you'll get it I eventually. Know. Listen, I'm not happy with how much I have to do and how little time I have to do it. And it's all right. how No, but it's not okay because obviously, like, you know, people want that stuff. And, I mean, the, 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 we were, we were on an upwards trajectory. We were on an upwards trajectory with memberships and stuff, and now we are a downward spiral. And a part of it's without a doubt my fault in not being able to respond to everyone's messages yet, get all the stuff out yet. Uh, I haven't made the calls to you know giving. I've got to give members the extra content. I got I got to step it up, but I got to figure out how and when and where to step it up. So it is a hundred percent my out. fault. We it just, is my we, fault. We'll, we'll just keep poking you, and eventually you you know you'll get to it when you get to it. Maybe um, maybe man. what I might need to do. I hate I hate to, to. I've been thinking about this. Being that like, I know I know the live streamers love the live streams. That's why we're here. But like I've been thinking, like you know, we're not, we're not. The live streams hit a plateau, and we're not moving the needle anymore. I, I, I gotta start maybe doing standalone videos, and I gotta do them in more of a quantity, and I might have to cut back on a live stream or two. I'm not, I'm not saying it's gonna happen. I'm saying I've been thinking about it. I've been thinking about ways to change things up to attract new viewers. That's all. Well if you get that editor you're talking about, you could have some of your, uh, the streams from like doomed and scam economy and yeah. maybe even some of the crazier calls clipped. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't, I don't think, um, I actually don't do too many like segments though. Like the majority report does or any, like, like I used to, but then like I take so many calls 
And the inter- I don't, I don't want to cut back on the calls because I, I enjoy doing the call. I got to figure something out. That's on me to figure out. The, the interview section specifically would be good. Not that, you know, I, I like listening to the call portion too because yeah, but I I mean, listen, so I, I can watch the uh, live chats because I, I don't really see them when I'm talking. But uh, per- Personally, but, uh, I don't think clipping the, 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 the interviews will do anything because I'm, I'm just doing like, like the interviews of the first hour of the two to three hour show. I mean, I, I don't see how just – Clipping the interviews separately is going to do anything, honestly. Well, it's easier um, to pass around, and it's a lot less intimidating if you go to share it with somebody. They're like, oh, it's just an hour-long interview instead of like a full But, you know, like I said, I, think, I do yeah, go back. you make a point, right? I mean, that's what I would do on the majority report. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. I'm yeah. just, trying, just trying to figure things out, trying to figure out. Um, and I'm also, you know, I'm getting a little, I don't, I don't know. I, I hope it's not showing on the stream, but I'm getting a bit... Um, I don't know. I'm getting. I feel like I'm not giving. I'm not. I'm not at my peak performance on the live stream every week. I feel like maybe I'm doing too many live streams, like with the Leftist Mafia and the Majority Report. And then I mean, I I already cut back majorly on doing two shows a week when I was doing Scam Economy too, because I just couldn't keep up with it. And I'm still Scam Economy is not done, but I'm gonna be. You know, being that crypto is slowed down, I'm. I was able to slow down my output. I'm gonna be probably putting out maybe one or two episodes a month for Scam Economy for now until we'll see. I know I'm just trying to figure things out, see see what's gonna work, what isn't, because we were growing and then we just stopped, and so clearly I'm doing something wrong. Gotta gotta you know alter things a bit to make things work once again. You know what I mean? Yeah, well you know self improvement is always a good thing, but don't don't stress too much about it. We're behind you, bud. But All right, uh, cool. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I am at least. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of wanted to talk a little bit. Uh, I, on September 1st, I went down to Planned Parenthood because I did doing checkups for my HRT, you know, doing the trans woman thing. And they go down when you they, they sat down. I've maxed out all of my dosages and all of my blood work come back and all of the levels are healthy and all of that stuff. And they do this thing every time that I go down there where they ask if I still have support, which is good. And more proof that the right doesn't know their ass from a hole in the ground. You know, do you have support family, supportive uh, friends, the support network? Are there any worries that you have? And and I'm like, you know, no, no, that's all pretty good. I'm still not out to work, though, because, you know, lots of DeSantis uh, supporters there, specifically who support them because of the, the don't say gay stuff which is fun. But uh, I kind of brought up that I'm a little worried about, like, if the absolute worst happens and they get control of the government and they do decide to try doing a national ban, you know, what should I do? What should I look into? And she was like, "Eh, you know, it's probably not going to happen. And I said, yeah, but the Roe v. Wade thing wasn't exactly supposed to happen either. And she's like, yeah, okay, that's, you know, and then she gave me some suggestions for that. But then when I got home, I saw a streamer talk about, um, you know, the uh, 2025 conservative plan for leadership or whatever the fuck it's called. Have you heard about that at all? I have yeah, not. Yeah, I heard that. And like, you know, fear is validated. So I downloaded the PDF and I'm going to be going over the whole, all 900 pages of it just because I want to see what's coming. God damn it. And uh, I, I wanted to get your thoughts on it. Have you heard anything about it or have found time to read 900 if they think 900 pages is going to stop me from digging through it they they don't know me <laughs> i i need to look more i need to look into it now oh uh, it's basically a lot of it is they wanted they're still still on the abortion thing a, a lot of it seems like their main focus is on trans people naturally they just on that and a whole bunch of other pretty gnarly stuff so you know if you somehow find time to go through 900 fucking pages you know good luck but it might be worth it especially considering what you do on this show but uh, yeah i just wanted to point that out to you i'm gonna be reading through it too because i you know i know they want to do national bans i know they want to do abortion like flat out it's backed by the heritage foundation apparently Mm -hmm. so you know it's gotta be good right of course (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, I just I just wanted to see if you'd heard anything about that at all. 
I mean, I, 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 what, what is it again? What is it called again? Uh, oh, hang on. I have to. It's the mandate for leadership 2025. It's how they plan to take back the, the White House and stuff. And the, the opening. So I'm not familiar. I have to they, uh, they, read up on they're it. They're like, the left has managed to do so much damage. And we need to get guys who are ideologically this, that, and the other. And like. We're gonna turn it around. We're gonna we're gonna save this country and like they totally buy into their own bullshit. <laughs> right. So yeah. But yeah, if if you are a trans person at all, you know, trans man, trans woman like me, any of that, um start looking into backups for um your hormone replacement therapy if you're on that. Start looking for ways out of red states. Um the doctor that I was talking to, she brought up there, you know, states would fight that. And there is something to that. But last time I called in, I think I mentioned that there was a group in California trying to push some props to to get rid of some of those protections. And they were one of the first, I think the first actually, states to do the sanctuary states for people seeking medical care. I, I'm not, I don't think it was just for trans people. I think it was actually for abortion first, but it's, I know that's how it worked in, in Washington. So Washington, by the way, I've said it a lot, but I'm saying again, uh, Western Washington in particular, because that's where most of the blue districts are uh, safe. I got my HRT with informed consent, got my gender marker changed with just like a form and like a $35 fee. It's a one-page form you print out and you go down there, nice and easy. And if sh- shit really hits the fan, Canada is right up north, so there's an exit strategy there. But um, yeah, just just be safe out there, guys. There you go. I, I yeah. I mean, it's it's unfortunate that this is something that you have to go through while you're dealing with all the necessary stuff. Like this is a completely unnecessary, um, you know, part yeah. of going through, you know, your, your transition, whether it be, you know, just coming out to people or you, you're, you're going forward with, uh, well, you know, a surgery or whatever. I mean, it's just uh, completely unnecessary on top of all the other things to deal with. But unfortunately in 2023, we've, very specifically moved backwards on this issue. Um, and so, yeah, it, it sucks. If there's any silver lining to all of that, it's just been kind of eye opening and have, has given me a lot of experiences that it just as a white person in general in society, I probably wouldn't have had. You know, I'm not saying like trans people are exactly like black people one to one or anything like that, but like. I, I think I think the word is I think the word is because because of course none of these experiences are comparable because uh, you know everyone has but I think solidarity is the word yes solidarity is the it's word because that doesn't same. mean that doesn't mean you're having the same experience or you yeah, yeah. you understand but it shows that there is. Uh, or that you, I should say, not that you understand, because that is the point that you understand what other people are going through and show solidarity through support of of that. But um, yeah, I mean, I think solidarity is the perfect word to describe um, it's what like, uh, it's, various it's, marginalized it's, groups are probably feeling right now. Yes. Yeah, it's like Rebecca said on leftist mafia. You know, black people have been doing this since the existence of the nation, and they they still can't get help for shit on anything they can't get any movement on anything it seems like yeah um but yeah like like i said not exactly a one-to-one i'm not you know no no prison olympic stuff there but it, it really does kind of drive home the point that they'll find a noose that fits you you know <laughs> yeah uh, Oh, yeah. and yeah, anybody in the audience, if you have trans friends, family, whatever, can get on them. It's it's rough out there. It's stressful. Um, you know, no, you know, the, not that everybody's, not that all trans existence is pain. There there is trans joy, and that should be celebrated and looked for in, in in any capacity you get. But you know, let them know that you care and that you you know you see what's going on. It, it kind of helps. Well, it helps me at least not feel so crazy. <laughs> so. But, uh, yeah, y'all have a good night, okay? Thanks for the call, Charlie. As always, have a great night. Oh, hit that thumbs up button.
Thank you. I appreciate that. Let's go to the next call. Hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello, uh, Matthew. This is President's Democratic presidential candidate, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Hey, RFK, how you doing? Always a pleasure when you call in. My, my, I think my, especially after the last time you called in, easily one of my faves to sit down and have a chat with. How you doing? What do you want to talk about? I, I, I understand that, Matt, and, and it's it's definitely a pleasure for for me to speak with you on, on this very important topic. That, now you see what's happening with the COVID. I, I, it's, 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 it's popping up again in certain places. It never went away, but it's, it's, there's been spikes in various places and communities and yeah. Well, what, what, what do you want to say about it? Well, that's exactly what they want you to think. It's actually <laughs> a way to silence every one of us by forcing us to wear masks once again. Mm. Now, uh, we, we know that masks are actually more harmful than the virus itself. Really? We it, know that? that, that uh, I've, I've seen se several pieces of, pa I mean, papers that, that say that. And, and it's very interesting that, you know, which, which should be coming up at, at this point in my very successful campaign to appear on every white, right wing show while still being a Democratic presidential candidate. Well, I mean, uh, I I think it's um, very real what's happening. That you 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 don't think. What, what what do you think that has to do with that? Like I don't. I, I'm not understanding what you're saying there, uh, uh, sir. Well, well, you, you see what's happening uh, with President Trump. How? during the campaign is when they've decided to launch these uh, many uh, baseless investigations and into what he did. And uh, I mean, we really need to, to have a conversation about this. A conversation about what? COVID? Well, well besides that, I, I'm not sure if you, if you probably read this in your Smash Table uh, magazine that you write for. Um, that <laughs> Say that Google has denied my request to place absolutely free speech involved co videos out on the internet. Now, this is obviously a way to silence me and to prevent me from bringing people real uh, alternative facts. Yeah. Uh, what, what, they won't let you run ads? What was it? No, I. I, I was blocked. I have a restraining order now. <laughs> oh, you were Google, blocked from blocked Google from Google? Like you can't use the search engine? I, I, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm not even... A, if you type in Robert F. Kennedy Jr. into Google, you'll get nothing. I've been shadow banned completely. I'm going to try right now. I'm going to try right now. I'm going to type See in what Robert happened? See? F. Kennedy into Google. No. Nothing. Zero results. I see Wikipedia, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. I see your ca official uh, campaign well, website is number two right under Wikipedia. Perhaps, perhaps you're using some other Internet. I'm not sure. However, <laughs> I, I wanted I tried to keep two videos up speaking about the COVID and how it was a, definitely a bioweapon. And a judge said that I couldn't leave those videos on YouTube, even though I complained very, very strongly. You, you, oh, so they took down videos. That's why you were upset. They, they took down two videos of mine, and therefore they're silencing me and the information that the American people need to know about what's going on. What were the, what were the videos on? The videos were on how COVID was actually a bioweapon made by <laughs> bats and given to humans and then uh, enhanced at the Wuhan. Wait, wait, wait. wait. 
Yeah. They were a bioweapon made by bats? Are you saying that bats purposefully made COVID as a bioweapon? Are we saying there's like a, a, a there's a, a bat Matt, contingency we have Matt, to worry about? That like Matt, Matt, excuse Matt, excuse me, Matt, Matt. Do you do you realize how smart bats are? I don't think they're all that smart, actually. When I think of smart animals, I think of, like, dolphins and what? elephants. and. Why, excuse me, why is it that all these viruses seem to come from bats? They obviously have some out, <laughs> out for us. They're obviously out, out for the human race, and they want it. Now, my videos provided information about the COVID and, and, and how its origins... And they were very important videos, and so I took them to court. And now I'm I'm being silenced. You you can't find anything about me on YouTube or the internet or anywhere. There's there's just nowhere to find out about me. And so I've I've been silent. Wait, I'm I'm actually still interested in this bad thing. I'm I'm uh so you. Uh... So, 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 so what is your, what do, what do you think they're trying? Are you think, what are they trying to do? What, 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 they want to take over? They want to, like, bats want to be in charge? They want to be, like, what, the top of the food chain or something? You've seen Batman. I, I, what's, what's, what side is he on? Well, <laughs> you know, you've, you've seen the movies. Look, I, 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 I don't want to speak about Fast Master Plan did, right did now. I, did the, I stump you, RFK, Mister? <laughs> the Fast Master Plan is something we need to speak about. We'll talk about that later. My plan for vaccines, though, is we need to stop all vaccinations right now, immediately. Every vaccine. Every vaccine, because we can't be sure of how safe these things are. What about polio, the polio vaccine? That one too. I mean, <laughs> you know, this, is, this hasn't been a hundred years since the polio vaccine. And yet people are taking it willy nilly all across <laughs> America, poisoning, poisoning the children. Yeah. Wait, if a hundred years is willy nilly, how long do you think how long do you think we should study these vaccines before we actually deploy them and let people take them? Well, we'll be we'll be special settling up a special committee, putting together a special committee to determine exactly the right lengths for these research experiments to go on. And hundred years isn't enough. Uh, well, uh, I'll, I'll speak with some of my experts, and I'm sure that. But the really important thing right now is I've been censored from from YouTube. They've taken down videos that I've put that are very important videos about COVID nineteen, and they are they've been taken down. They've been censored. No one under no one's able to find me anymore. And this, I I I could find you, sir. I see you right on. Uh, like I said, I searched RFK Jr. and you showed up. Maybe maybe it's just certain content that is uh, breaking their rules. No, I mean you're not gone from the feeds completely. This is why I wind up going on Jordan Peterson and Tim Pool's program because they they don't ask questions like this. I I can just say say whatever I need to. To get to get my message across to the American people that I I'm the only one that can save America from whatever's happening right now. Right, right. Well, what is happening right now? Like, what are you saving America from? We we're saving we're saving America from those who would not save America. Mm. It's it, we we we've marketed mm. it and it seems to be going over rather well. Say, quite, say that, say, give that throw, throw that slogan at me one more time. Um, um, saving America from those who would not save America. Saving America from those who would not save not, America. Not save mm. America. We, mm. We're getting a call from Frank Lutz tomorrow. On, oh, are you gonna are you, have you hired his firm to uh, workshop that and, and poll people on it? Fra Frank and I are very, very good friends from from many years back. Interesting. It, it's, uh, um, it, it's been a very, very warm relationship. And he's been doing some focus group testing on my, my candidacy. So 
we'll be we'll be we'll we'll have that for you tomorrow if you'd like, Matt. And you can put I, it on your tech table smash thing. Uh, that's uh, I'm sure it's very impressive, and many people have said it, it's it's quite wonderful. And I, I appreciate the time you, you've taken for uh, listening to me, Matt. It, it's been a, a real pleasure to speak with you. It's been fantastic as always to talk with you, sir. Um, RFK Jr. Everyone, have a great night. Thank you, Matt. Goodbye. Bye. I, I, I'm a big fan of when RFK calls in. Um, don't like the man as a candidate, but as a call-in listener, <laughs> it's, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. Bad Lefty says, Bobby Jr. just won my vote. There you go. It's what we do on this show. We inform the public. Hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello? Hello, this is Count Gorkula calling from his vampire castle. Oh my god. <laughs> this show is just is all just uh, impressions now. The good and the bad. What? <laughs> uh, hello, Count Gorkula. I'm, How <laughs> I'm bad as an evil. <laughs> I was actually... Oh no, I wasn't referencing you. I was referencing the, uh, the, the first Trump one too. Uh, but how are you doing, uh, the evil? Yes, Sebastian? I have to say that regarding, uh, uh Uncle Adi, I'm a, personally, I'm a fan. You're a fan of Uncle Adi? Well, that makes sense. Yes, uh, speaking of, uh, ghouls and such, would you excuse me a moment? I'm going to resanguinate, uh, Gugliani. Sh sure. <laughs> are you looking forward to... Halloween? Uh, no, I stay out. I'm usually this way all all year. Right, right. Well, I mean, you, isn't it easier to hide amongst I the mean, people when I <laughs> prefer to stay home and, and eat uh eat my cereal, count chocolate. Oh, okay, this is. <laughs> okay. So, so uh, uh, you so... you pajama boys that are followers of mine. Or lackeys of my sworn enemy, oh. George Soros, who's George also Sor unfortunately Hungarian, but not really. Ha ha ha. Um, <laughs> so you wanted to say something about uh, my uh, poor lad, Stephen Crowder. Yes, regarding Stephen Crowder. Just going to say about Crowder. Interesting. Let's gravitas. Hear. That's his problem. He lacks a certain gravitas to speak about all that does the, the problems hmm. that have cost this country that has found the grace to adopt me. Interesting. So you think, you say that is the, uh, the issue with Crowder? That and I think he, he lacks a certain je ne sais quoi of a regarding evil. He gets too much into the comedy bit. That's not really what he. No, he he, has he to gets make. too much into the comedy bit. Okay. <laughs> yes. He has to learn from me. Right. Whatever I do right. that makes people laugh, I do it unintentionally. Right. That's true. <laughs> well, it's just they, a, they... it's just a large ham in me. Oh. Well. Well, I must say that you, as we as we say in Hungarian, see at. Is that and what? And I'll is go. That what... I'll go out in a puff of smoke. Okay. <laughs> is that what you say? Okay. Have a great night, uh, uh, Count Gorky. <laughs> Ooh, what a what a night! What a night! Getting all the calls. Um, oh, we just had uh, someone trying to call in. Call back in. We just had a few people uh, hang up. Let me uh, reach back out and see what's going on. Um, let me take... 
do 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 Oh, 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 let's lost. Oh, call back in. Right after, I'm going to take another call while you call back in. Call back in right after this call and I'll take you. I don't know what happened there. Hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey. Hey, how are you? Oh, this is Aaron calling from Australia. Hey, yeah, Aaron good, from Australia. Hold on. Let me pull you up on the feed. Can I pull you up on the feed? I see you have your video on. Uh, yeah, go for it. Cool. One second. Let me, uh, there we go. Hey, Aaron from Australia. What was it to talk about? Uh, is it cool if we talk about Crowder? <laughs> Hell yeah. I um, mean, we can talk about anything you want, but if you just so happen to want to call in about the topic earlier in the show, that just fits, yeah. even, it fits even better. Amazing. Look, I I just had to call in. I I am a, even though I'm from Australia for some reason, I'm a sicko for right-wing American oh, awful welcome. people. Welcome um, to the club. <laughs> <laughs> um and also i just need to clarify because i'm australian like what's what's the the rules on swearing because um i just want to make sure i don't you are free to say be... whatever you'd like to that is the slang of your language so feel for of your country <laughs> or whatever so feel free i cannot i that's cannot a... use it but you can <laughs> okay all right that's that's a dangerous uh, rule to give to an australian matt but i'll uh, <laughs> i'll do my best not to push the limits um no i look i i have been um watching crowder right right back till the like the breitbart days when he first started um and he's been one of those ones that you know you could just tell he was an awful person um right from the get-go and so watching his downfall, slow decline over the past couple of years, mainly because of his hubris, uh, has just been so delicious, like unbelievably delicious um, in ways that, yeah, um, I, I, I've struggled to describe to people. Um, I mean, I thought we peaked when he got punched like back in 2010, I think it was. And for those people who aren't familiar with that, I highly recommend them uh, searching mm -hmm. the Crowder Union video. Um, Absolutely. It's very satisfying to watch. Um, the other one to watch is his interview with Amy Schumer, where she actually, on Red Eye, where she completely, like, just makes total fun of him for his... Um, I've actually the not abstinence seen only. It's worth checking out. They go on oh, Greg Gutfield. Back when he was Mr. He was the whole the married guy thing. Right, right, yes. right, right. Yeah, yeah. Abstinence only. And she just absolutely rails him. And he's he uses that thing. He's a funny guy to watch because he he presents this this front of I'm being very civil and I'm presenting a civil case and we're talking about this. We're just discussing. But if you watch enough videos of him, as soon as someone does something that slightly insults him, he sees that as permission, like because they started it first, to just unload the most awful stuff. Um, another example of that is the, um, the his change my mind, the socialism is evil. He, it, it's the one and only change my mind that he live streamed. He did it actually live online. And it's the last time he did it because this one guy just totally rails him. And you can see him get really, really flustered and Was aggressive. Was this in Texas? I think it was. Because I, I had that was. guy on the show. That was... Um... Oh, the, was he Yusuf? Was that his name? No, Stephen Monticelli. Ah. Um, it might have, been a different, might have been a different one you're talking about then. I, I might yeah. be confusing the, the Oh, two. no. That was the guy with the hat. Right, the glasses. right. Yep. Steve, uh -huh. Yes. No, this is this is a guy um, a little bit further back who just, um, yeah, just rails and actually says to Crowder, like, the reason why you're getting upset is because you're losing the debate. And, yeah, that's another one to watch. Um, so I think it's it's kind of been one of those things, you know how it is. It, it, it's just nice to get a little bit of balance, a little bit of karmic balance and to see people like this actually – you know, get what they deserve and get exposed for the people that they actually are. Right. Yeah. Right. And no, I, think I think that's this, exactly, I, mean, I think videos. that's a major, I think that's a major part of it. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, um, you know, it's, 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 it shows that they, I mean, first of all, a lot of what they do, they can dish, but they can't take. Um, 100%. and it also shows just how like, 
at least a lot of them are th- their whole aura. Everything about them is is built on such shaky ground that like just mm. a few chips fall a different way and they lose all influence. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and. Yeah, and I think that I mean the the thing with Ethan the other year was great. Like that just showed like if if it's not under his conditions and you know perfectly suited for him, he just he just crumbles. Like, and I think it's hilarious that they the, the right winger using that episode with Sam Cedar to not debate Sam. Like it just it makes me laugh so much. Like it the Timple now has to. They are yeah. Exactly, like like it is. They're not. Like, Tim Pool's got to construct this whole story that Sam's a grifter, which is just so absurd, in order to justify why he won't have him on the show. Like, it's just, it's just, it, it's absurd. Um, so, yeah, and, and just one last thing. It, it, I After all the stuff that's come out this year, after Dave Landau, his interviews, after the ring footage, it, it's amazing to see how anyone would want to work with him or justify his actions. Like the fact that he, once he's launched on Rumble, that um, he's actually got a team behind him. It's just that they're trying to prop him up. It's it's a losing battle. It's pretty fun to watch. Right. Oh, before I mean, forget- I'm sure I'm sure they're oh. still making money, right? But they're not. They, they've lost the peak of Crowder. They don't have that anymore. Yeah, that's for done. sure. He, like he's he's done. He's got Alex Jones on the program for God's sake. Like he's pitching conspiracy theories. Um, right. And one last video that's really good to watch that I feel slipped under the radar for a lot of people. When he announced his deal with Rumble earlier this year, there was an interview with him and Russell Brand. Have you seen that one? I I I, I think it's it sounds familiar. What what happened? Yeah, in- it was just it was kind of the announcement that he was on. He, he was moving to Rumble, and I think they set it up because Russell Brand's on Rumble, and it was just kind of showing these big heavyweights. And the, you could. You can visibly see Russell Brand trying to hold back his disdain for Crowder. You can see that they're just not... I mean, Russell Brand's got his problems. That's a whole other conversation. But you can just see that it was very much uh, an organised chat between him and Crowder for Rumble. And that if Crowder, if Brand could talk to absolutely anyone else in the world at that moment, he would have done it. And it's, yeah, it's good to watch. Right. I have to watch, I have to catch that one. I feel like I might have seen clips when it came out. Right. Yeah. But it just it just goes no, it's Crowder doing his usual stick and Brand just struggling to connect with him. It's yeah, it's good. But anyway, just wanted to come and say thanks for talking about his his downfall because it's it's absolutely top shelf shelf entertainment for me. I love I love seeing it. Who who is is uh watching from Australia, who is your favorite of the and you know what I mean by favorite. But who is your favorite <laughs> of these guys? Uh the right wing nut jobs. I think yeah. um Oh look, it was Crowder for a long time. Um, but I think the one at the moment and it's just because I I can't comprehend how he's popular or how anyone could follow him is Tim Pool. I I'm just he, he's proof that anyone can do anything because he's not a particularly clever man. He's not an articulate man. He he He's done very well in the hustle and the grift, but um, I just he's just there's just nothing, and and the way that he's so clearly trolling on Twitter and just it doesn't take a side on anything, but clearly does. Yeah, he he's the new fascination now. I think. Yeah, he's uh, he's up there. Uh, he's certainly a. Uh... He's an interesting guy for a multitude of reasons, mm. uh, such as his uh, his giant uh, compound <laughs> uh, is certainly fascinating to me. Uh, yeah. to see which, which he will was, uh, which he will stay inside if this civil war that he keeps waiting to happen. Like the civil it, war thing is so ridiculous, such nonsense. Yeah. It's like. Like, even for, like, that's his whole, that's all he ever mentions, fine. But, I mean, it's yeah. so, like, it's so cheap. Mm. Like, it's so cheap. Like, it's the lamest of things to, like, uh, to, to be known for. Like, the, you're constantly, uh, tw- you know, posting up a, a, a flurry of 
fear and like it's not like it's it's not like Alex Jones fear mongering like um mm. like oh you gotta you 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 we're gonna we're gonna get all this stuff at my store so we're ready to take charge and and take mm. on the it's not even like that it's like it's like oh civil war. It's a civil war. Mm. It's a civil war. It's 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 like not yeah. even like a like Jones is smart enough to turn it into a call of action for him. It's smart enough to turn it yeah. into a call to action specifically for him to make money off of it. And I'm gonna mm. give him that credit because that's clearly oh, yeah. what he's doing it for. It, it worked for for, him. for 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 Tim Pool. I, I what's I mean I know he dabbles in the the survivalist gear stuff, yeah. but he never but he never connects. To, I, I at least online he isn't connected to with like buy this yes yeah i think he tried to do it for a while and it, it doesn't seem to have taken off as as much as he wanted but it's you're right it's just the smallest infraction is like oh civil war oh they, you know there's pronouns on the thing oh it's right civil war. like it's they're, not it's not changing even like, this it's not like a well thought out like played like a like uh it's not like a well thought out like um a plan to drive up memberships or mm. uh, uh, uh sales. It's just like his go to when he doesn't know how to describe anything else because he knows his yeah. audience will just like react to it and not even react mm. to it in a way like I said Jones does. Like it's not it's 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 cheap. It's so cheap. Yeah, yeah. Engagement on Twitter. <laughs> mm. Awesome. Anyway, thanks for having me on, Matt. Keep Have a great. Good fight. Have a great day. You're calling from Australia. It's already tomorrow yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's looking good. <laughs> Take See care. You, man. All right. We got some more people c- c- calling in. I will uh, be happy to take your calls. Just uh... let's see. Uh... Hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? It's uh, Hansy, man. Hey, Hansi, it's working now. Good, good, good. How you do- oh, I love the background. Let me put you up on the feed. Hold on. Yeah, hold on. <laughs> Hansi calling in from the Majority Report Studios, clearly. I I, 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 I took it over, man. It's the NWO storyline right now. He uh, I, 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 I has heard booted you- Sam Cedar out of the building. Yeah. I- <laughs> The, I hear Yo, the I hear the whack pack held the Sam down and spray painted. <laughs> yeah, what's it called? Uh, Yo, know, uh, what's it called? Yo, know, if if you're looking to spice up your show, bro, maybe I you you, you gotta bring me on board to be a whack packer on this show, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I should uh I should do that. I should reach out to CM Punk for an interview. I should. Uh... Oh. <laughs> well, well, well you know, if you if you do if you do I I, I you know, here's the thing right okay and, and this is all this is just my my theory okay this is my theory he hasn't confirmed it so I, I think in like okay I always feel like in like in, in entertainment like I'm not saying like I feel like it's like a class of people who are gonna be uplifted in that year and I felt like in 2011, I was supposed to cross over and become more quote unquote known. But because I had like, because I got into conspiratorial stuff, I didn't know what I had to do if I had to quote unquote sell my soul. And I could tell that people were really fucking pissed off because I think they had high hopes for me like in 2009, 2010. And I always felt like CM Punk was one of those guys that wanted to interact with me because he was a Stern fan. And I think he took. I, I think because of me not going to the next level, I don't think he ever got on the Stern show. So I think he held that against me. He'd always kind of like bait me, but like with his own base, basically. You know what I mean? So I always had like uh, an imaginary vendetta against him. But like, but like, it, like he would take jabs at me, but like like su- subliminally kind of in a way because and, and, and that's why like I, 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 I kind of relate to him a little bit but then like at the same time I was like fuck this guy this guy knows what I'm going through with the politics behind the scenes and he's playing a character that's like you know going calling the system and it's like you're, you're you're basically putting me down about like not wanting to go to the next level or something if that makes sense uh yeah yeah you know what I mean I I I I don't want to go completely uh, conspiratorial, or whatever. But like it, it just uh, you know what I mean. Like I I always feel like when people are supposed to blow up, like there's a class of people who you who 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 get to go to the next level. It, it, it's not like everything's completely evil. It just means that like there's like a pro wrestling element to how you get elevated in the system. If that makes sense. Right. I mean, so, so you're saying what? I'm sorry. Maybe I'm a little bit. What are you saying? 
see, I'm, w- w- repeat it again. I'm sorry. I just want to make sure <laughs> I understand. Wait, what polar part? I, I'm taking this show completely out of the fuck. I took it. I mean, you listen. You read sports entertainer. I figured I'd come on and say this stuff because you had sports entertainers come on here the past couple of calls. No, I mean, for, for you, if you want my take on what happened, I think. Uh, I mean, there could be a few things. I, I really don't know. He could have done it. You know, he could have wanted out. Honestly, maybe there is a, a WWE deal waiting for him. Who knows? Um. Also, uh, I uh, a possibility. I think he, um, um, if if it wasn't well thought out and planned that way, uh, he probably could use some help. Uh, I think he's got this mentality of the world is against him, and I'm sure at times he it, it's certainly felt that way. But um, well, I, that- clearly, that wasn't the case in AEW at first. Well, see, see, see. That's why I listen. Okay, I, I know, I, I know the, the way that it plays out, whatever. And listen, I understand, like, 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 to like a lot of your base, like anything kind of conspiratorial, whatever, might just say, oh, it's a right wing thing. I think that that's where I think people on the left kind of uh, like, like, I, I'm not saying like everyone, right? Because people that are open minded, but I feel like. Like the people like on the right who project the conspiracies, my conspiracy is always that the right wing are the ones that are doing what they're accusing others of doing. Like that's like, you know what I mean? So like, so that's so like there is a conspiracy. So the way I analyze information is I look at the entire game as like an entertainment dollar type of thing. Meaning that like it doesn't like so when I say okay, stuff is a work. That doesn't mean that the people in within this like who are who are who are playing the characters in this twenty four seven news cycle and all that. It doesn't mean they aren't going through stuff. It, 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 to to be put to be put on that level to being a character on social media nonstop, like how CM Punk has always been an internet character. It's like it still takes a toll on you mentally because you're basically it's like it's like a reality show. That's how I look I look at the world, I guess. Because maybe I don't understand because again, whenever you try to understand the rules that officially exist, like there's always inconsistency to them, and like and then people will always like like for example like. Like politics used to be like pro wrestling, old school, old school rules, right? And then the attitude era came, and none of the tropes and none of the stipulations made any fucking sense. And you're like, well, that doesn't. That used to be. That used to not be a rule, and now that's the rule now. That's how I look at politics. So Trump was basically the, the attitude era of politics, and now we're in the ruthless aggression of politics, where we're now latching on to like what made the Trump, um. Uh, portion fucking you know exciting and all that if that makes sense does that make more sense or am I like losing your entire audience you're probably losing the entire audience but I sort of see what you're saying <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm sorry man uh, no this, I mean I, I I think um you know I think um you know I, I think I get what you're saying I get why you look at everything that way it makes uh, it, 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 it sort of like breaks things down in an easier way to digest is that what was that am I am I get, getting you correctly here what well, no no but like I'm not saying that like things are not happening though like because a lot of conspiracy like whenever someone says false flag and oh crisis actors I, I, like I'm not saying things don't actually fucking happen I think that we live in such an advanced society that billionaires could fund little billionaires that are above the law that own the politicians can literally make shit look like that that's why whenever like okay for, to 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 go back at the right wing. I believe some of these like some of these drag shows that some of the right wingers prop up that do have kids that seem sexualized. I personally think that those are right wing people doing that so they can weaponize it. So even though I guess I can't prove that, but I believe that stuff is funded to manufacture more hatred and make you think that all drag queens are doing that in front of kids and and uh, and they'll, so they'll always have an extreme. Uh, an, an extreme uh, um, example. That's why I say that, like when celebrities go through shit, it's like they're manufact. They're like, for example, like this whole uh, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard thing. Like the way that it's so politically motivated by right wingers, it's like they create these celebrity gender wars so that they can like act like, uh, oh look, see, w- women are the ones that are lying. The women are the ones that are the abusers. So they use celebrity examples. To manufacture consent. That's why I always look at it in that way. It's like if you watch this TV show, The Boys, that's how I look at the world. Basically, the celebrities are the superheroes, 
in 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 this instance if that makes sense uh yeah i, I guess um i think i know what you're saying i mean i i wouldn't i wouldn't look at them like that uh they certainly don't well, have I, any powers I, well, to well, worry I mean, about I, like well i mean i mean but 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 isn't it so super obvious with how like with how how politics like how, like how like do you notice how like the entertainment has now become the politics. Like every, like I bet you, you know, do you want to have a bet at, at, at some point since they're building this up? Right, I call planted seeds. But you know, one of these congressional here have the gang so vitriolic. I'm gonna bet you at one point somebody like Marjorie Taylor Greene or someone is actually gonna get physically violent at one of these hearings or something like that. Like that's how much of a shit show we're moving into. Basically, would you take that bet or no? No, I think I, you're. I I think what you're saying does make sense. Well, so, hey, I'm, 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 I'm so used. You know, if I were to stir on this, or I were to already lay on this, whatever, or anyone else, they'd be like, "Hansy, what the fuck are you talking about? You sound like you're fucking. Are you on your fucking meds yet? Are you? No, no, no. Seriously, you. Well, you, I you appreciate. Need to... I, I appreciate that you're comparing me to uh, what Howard Stern and uh, oh, Artie Lang. You said right. Well, I don't know if I appreciate the Artie Lang comparison. <laughs> well, I mean, Artie, what's, what's the call? See, Artie, see, that's a, you know, that's a case of never meeting your heroes because I he was the reason why I got into listening to the Stern Show because I was a fan of him on Mad TV, and I feel like he took advantage of that fact that I was a fan of him, where he would call me when I was like going through my when I didn't want to quote unquote sell my soul. He was one of the guys that called me to like go ahead, call to my show, so I won't treat you like Howard. And then I call into a show, and he'd treat me like fucking Howard, and he would like do that kind of. And I'd have these really, uh, like these like really vicious conversations off air with him, and he would use it as like, yo, know, hands. It doesn't mean hands are friends. I can make fun of him. I call him at five in the morning sometimes. You know what I mean? So like, I, I, so never meet your fucking heroes in that regard because after that Artie Lang I, situation, you know, I I don't know these. I, obviously, I don't know these guys, but um. You know, a lot of comedians sort of have uh, it could, could be assholes. You know, I mean, that's just sort of what their uh, uh, shtick is. Uh, are you saying that Artie? Lang, you, I mean, it's, it shouldn't be shocking to me that Artie Lang uh, would have done, done that to you. <laughs> yeah. See, it's, 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 another, it's, it's another thing because, like, you listen. Like, I said, I, I, again, this is one of my main examples of some. Like, Artie Lang is the main example of somebody who's like an old school Italian dude. And I guess because his dad, like, I guess maybe, like, like braided him when he was younger about being a manly man, whatever. He would be, like, one of those overly homophobic guys where, like, he would call you a fruit for, like, no reason. And it felt like in order to get at him, you had to go back at him and do it like him. Because I always felt like he was self-projecting. And, like, because he would do, like, if you look back at some of the stuff that he was saying back then, like, he got into a fight with, like, a gay employee over there and all that kind of, and this is before he came out of the closet, whatever, and, dude, the, any time, like, he flipped out because his assistant said bloomies in front of his associates. He goes, don't ever use that word around me. What are you? And, and he said the F word, basically. You know what I mean? So he, he used to be, like, like Wait, that. In what word? Bloomies? Like, Bloomingdale's? Bloomies. Yeah, Bloomingdale's. Yeah, he goes. I couldn't find him at Bloomies. It's one of the most infamous. Uh, if you look at him breaking down, whatever. But like, yeah, no, I, I can understand why. Like, if like you know what I mean. Like, with a lot of like uh, people from people from the LGBTQ community. Like, like there was one. Like, I, I guess uh, H Howard did like a you know, that, you know that show back in the day, Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. Right. Okay, so th they were Stern fans, and they let Artie be on the show. It didn't air. Okay, and at first, I, you know, I felt bad for these guys because at first, right, the, Artie's just drunk, and I guess, like, he, you know, he, he's just acting a fool, right? But he kept making, like, oh, you you, you guys want to fuck me, right? You guys want to fuck me, right? And they're like, ah, ha, ha, ha. He was drunk as the show was going on, and then he kept, like, being more ag aggressive about it, like, well, come on, marry me, huh? Marry me. And then the, the main host guy, he goes to the side camera and goes, okay, you know, at first, this is kind of funny. But this was getting too out of control, whatever. So they didn't air the episode because it was just so out of control, basically. You know what I mean? You were out of control, you said? No, no, not me. The Ar Artie, Artie was. Artie was out. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah, mean, yeah. I, 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 I would listen to Stern show. My, my dad would listen to it when he would take me to school in the morning when it was on like terrestrial radio, and. um 
you know, once he l left the series, that was it. I totally, I used to listen to Howard Stern all the time, but now it's, I mean, th but then it was just I stopped for me. Uh, so, yeah, so, so I'm really behind on the Howard Stern lore. Uh, I'm so, also, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't familiar with you either until. Uh, I, 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 I started calling during the serious years. That's why, right. that's why. And so, so, but, but so to compare like wrestling. In in the terrestrial radio days, Artie when he just got on the show, he would be like a mid carder who everyone rooted for. And then when the serious years came on, it was basically all focused on his heroin addiction. And Howard would always play dumb about it. And Artie would just get worse. And people would be warning Howard, like you know that he's getting worse, and he just played dumb about it. And then so then you can tell that maybe Artie his lashing out the last couple of years was him wanting to leave because I think there was pressure for him to stay. So he, I think he was trying that the, the, the last, like the overly attack that he was doing, I think he was trying to get fired because I think, I think he couldn't take it anymore. So like, so it, so if you compare it to wrestling in that, in that sense, he was like a main, he was the main event guy during the serious years. And that's when people got kind of sick of him as well, because he started becoming the Artie show basically about, Already missing work, or already on heroin, already uh, nodding out in sleep. That's, that's why the reason why I called in because you're, you're talking about Stephen Crowder, and a lot of the stuff that Stephen Crowder is doing, it always feels like, okay, when you expose what, like, and the thing is, we apply regular work environment to what goes on in these institutions and show business, whatever, like you know, like a faction, whatever, and it feels like whatever the, like, like these new guys are going like doing Stephen Crowder and all of them, right? This feels like those type of initiation type of deal, like of the harassment of employees, those have always existed in those institutions because everybody has those complaints. But now it feels like it becomes its own storyline where now we're playing it out like he's like this social media villain, basically. So even though he's being punished, we're still talking about the guy still, right, obviously. So it feels like that's like the next evolution of where show like that's why I look at where show business is going, basically, where it's going to the social media world now. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if you're not, if you're not getting in trouble and you're not part of the news cycle or discourse, you're basically useless. Like, you're not going to get off on just your talent now. You have to have, like, a, a war going on. Right. That's a yeah, that's a good point. I yeah, I think that's certainly part of it. I mean, yeah, there's still people who get by on talent, but um, no, yeah, there's usually no, some sort of no. there's usually some sort of hook, right? Yeah, no, no, yeah. I, I don't want to say that people don't work hard because whenever you say something about like oh, selling your soul, that means like oh, it had it had to be easy. I don't think anything's easy. It means it's even more hard work. So like I I, use, I, I so I just want to preface it because uh because I, because I know like being kind of conspiratorial can scare people off. And I understand that because even in 2010s, I was falling for right wing adjacent type of conspiracies that would lead there. But because like there was more of a positive side of what people were doing, I go, okay, well I can excuse some of the, like the, like the problematic stuff that doesn't really seem to be the matter. But now it seems like anyone in the 2010s, like Alex Jones and all of them who are conspiracy theorists were basically now becoming like, very far right wing, and and the reason why I bring it up is because if like say one or two things that he says might like happen or come true, everyone will act like oh um th that means he's a hundred percent right about everything. But it's like he, I believe he's an insider, so he would know inside stuff where he can basically persuade and manufacture consent. Because I I've never like even when I listen to Alex Jones, I never agreed with his whole like. Oh, they're coming for your gun stance. It felt that always felt like a gimmick, even though I didn't understand the the, the whole technicality of it. But like, I, they, it's a shame that they banned like his archives because if you look back at some of the stuff that he was saying, because like it, this, this is why I got into the conspiracy about um like organized like you know mass shootings because in 2010 2011 he was like promoting that like in the next couple of years you're gonna see that there's going to be um, mainstream pushed mass shootings. And this is all going to be designed to take away your guns. And I'm like, oh, shit, that's crazy. And all of a sudden, I started noticing in 2011 more push. And then by 2012, more push. I'm like, wow, like, the, like I know there's shootings every single day. But I'm like, yeah, I, I guess what Alex Jones said was right. But I still, even at that time, even if I was falling for it, I would still question, like, what I was listening to. I, didn't com I, I never completely bought into a conspiracy and not question the person who's being the arbiter of truth, if that makes sense. 
No, I think it. I mean, yeah, I think it, it does. <laughs> I know you might be shocked again. <laughs> no, no, I, 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 I'm waiting for the heel turn where you're gonna super kick me at some point. You know what I mean? No, no. <laughs> no listen, but I've that's... I've I've told you when you're you've um. You know, when I thought your your take has been a little out there, and I've told you when I agree, and I think you're making sense here. No, no, no that's cool. No, I, I, so when you, I just want to clarify that because whenever it's like someone says, I'm a, and I know that there's a lot of people that catch traction that are bad faith conspiracy people, and you know what I mean? And I, and I, and I realize that I've like kind of like, you know, fallen for, for some of that stuff, especially when, like, like for example, if, I, if I've known to talk to in my life or, like oh someone who has mainstream platform like I, like I could never talk to Howard Stern about like the the nuances of Israel and Palestine right well because that's, that's not that's not the show he does though you know no 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 but, but no but no but no no he he does do that type of show because he would like like he would manufacture more fucking consent with that type of shit right so me being online and wanting to have nuance or whatever but then I would notice that like the conspiracy message board or like Reddit message board or whatever they would take it to like yeah, you see, Hitler wasn't so wrong. He just wanted to get rid of Zionists. I'm like, okay, oh, dude, I'm I, I'm stupid, but I'm not that fucking stupid. You know what I mean? Like, see, now I can. You're see not why stupid, I, my friend. Yeah, how, how you're how you're luring me in and all that. So I I've always had to watch myself. Like, do you? I don't know if you're around the 2010s, like online a lot. But did you notice that the 2010s, at least on at least from online stuff, David Duke got David Duke got like a a, a reintroduction where people were like basically doing propaganda to gas him up because he was getting more traction because like i didn't know much about him right? i just know that he was a social with the kkk so when i bring that up in message boards i'm like well isn't this a guy for the kkk because he's talking about palestine and israel and he's showing more uh, uh you know concern for palestinians and i go to the people i'm like but isn't this a guy a kkk guy and then they, and then they would go to me oh no no see he used to be but you see the democrats have david bird and obama and hillary clinton that's a kkk guy you know what i mean and so like they would use that to justify why we had to hear david duke and then i'd be like and i and i and i and i, and I wasn't really following because I, 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 I was a dumbed down fucking guy but i didn't know much about him but like i just knew, noticed I don't, I don't know if you ever noticed that did you notice that like in the 2010s he kind of resurfaced for a bit like as like he'd be in a lot of alt media basically yeah, uh, he was definitely around. Yeah, he like, was, like, yeah, like so, 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 and because you think the internet was where all like the underground opinion was, I noticed that there would be campaigns of people like, for example, when he was interviewed on TYT, there would be a whole message like uh, them berating the message board, uh, the 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 comment section by giving jank shit for um contesting him whatever so i was like yo what's good because i used to think the internet was just the underground place where the voice of the voice wasn't heard so i didn't know that it was like funded with like a bunch of fucking racist fucking people constantly like you know organizing their efforts essentially you know what i mean so in the 2010s i was like a lot more like like confused and because of like the information that was like you know be, like because you go if it was if it doesn't on, on mainstream media then it's like well then the mainstream media is not covering it so I'd be one of those guys but now I can see how like a lot of that has been manufactured to become more mainstream narrative in the 2020s if that makes sense. No, yeah, I I see what you're saying. Um, I I mean usually. The people you're talking about, specifically like on those message boards and stuff, they're not dealing in good faith, right? So like yeah. their excuse to bring up David Duke was just, oh, the other side has this, this, and this. And I guess, you know, for people uh, outside of the political bubble, I guess that would make sense. Something that's simple, like, oh, I guess that, yeah, look at that. But like they, they knew what they were doing. Like they didn't really care. They, they, they didn't need an excuse as to why they would listen to David Duke, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I don't know. I think because of like the whole, um, like, I, I guess because like when like, you know, I, I, I saw that like, uh, I guess when it was like the, the Bin Laden death, and then that's what kind of put me on the internet, like the internet, because I guess do like kind of like, okay, I'm anti George Bush, but I only go as far as being like, how like the mainstream was doing it, like, you know what I mean? And I thought, okay, we're getting into the habit, at least, at least maybe, 
like going more like to the left side because I, I felt like everything in American television was always geared like in more of a right wing kind of a way. And like I didn't know like the technicalities of it. So it felt like in like in the, in the mid 2000s, like during the like when Obama was running and all that, I felt like there was going to be like good shit ahead or whatever. They're calling out Bush and all that. And then when the Bin Laden thing happened and I had like questions about like, 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 oh, because, like, there's been reports that, like, he may have died years earlier. And, again, I don't know, whatever. But because I had questions and then people were blindly shutting me down, it then made me go to other alt of things of people who were embracing it, whether it, whether they were bad faith or not. So that's how I kind of got um, put into that whole conspiratorial world where I thought, like, okay, I can't have conversations and ask questions with people that are, quote, unquote, the establishment. So now I have to go and resort to talking to people online. And then you, and you don't know at the time that it's like a new right wing grift that's up that's kind of like or, like orchestrating, like not the mainstream Republican stuff, but like the stuff that's now considered the far right now. You know what I mean? So like if this stuff was like like if Trump's era happened in the 2000, like in the mid 2000s and early 2010s, I, I guarantee you, I most likely would have been so brainwashed. I would have probably been on the on the QAnon Trump side, basically, without no. You know what I mean? Because 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 now seeing how people are reacting now and how they're man, how they're manipulated now, I look at that and I and I have I have uh, back tra background trauma of like me falling for a lot of the right wing adjacent stuff. So that's why I'm always reflecting on like you know and getting better. And I try to like you know try to like use use my my experience as being a dumbed down guy and being fucking being like manipulated. And I try to put it out there so that maybe you guys can understand how some people like feel when they're like dumbed down they feel like they have to align with a click. Even if like, like even if you're right about a lot of things you're saying, right? Like, and you're, you're doing the socially left. But if I don't understand like how, how trans people act, like how like the science of that works, and I and I just want to agree with you. Like I'm I'm just gonna be regurgitating, even though like you're giving me the good information, but I wouldn't understand it myself essentially. You know what I mean? Like so that's why I have to go the conspiratorial route to get to my uh ev evolvement. You know what I mean? Because I the way I look at it is like, well, if science is advanced, then that would mean that more genders all genders have always existed for a long fucking time, and that maybe the people who are in charge of this planet dumbed it down to two genders basically to make it simpler for some odd reason even though the all genders have always existed that's how i uh you know process it if that even though it doesn't make any sense to a regular person no, who... i actually think you make a lot of sense in terms of where you're coming from i think uh what you're saying is completely accurate in terms of how some people uh think and how they decide what you know what sources to regurgitate because it makes them like if, if like what you said, I think it makes perfect sense. And I'm sure that's how a lot of people act in the space. Like if you are in this weird sort of, um, you know, and this is especially online where everything, I mean, everything is political, but online it's that, that, that thought process is inescapable. Um, like, you know, obviously what you do in your everyday life, that's political, but you might not have someone there to discuss the politics of what you're doing or whatever. But online, that person will likely come across your content or find you. Uh, and so it's inherently inescapable online. Um, and if you're not someone who understands that side of things, um, you're going to look for something to defend where you are because that's what people usually do when they feel like they're being maybe attacked or whatever. And that's how they decide to sort of double down on the, the, the sort of, you know, the, the more reactionary uh, personalities online because ostensibly that might be who, you know, they, they're, they, they might not be with them on the journey, but they're at the same conclusion. And so, you know, maybe if they had someone else to follow along on that journey, that conclusion would be different. But because they're already at that conclusion, they go to whoever gets them there. No, no, no definitely. Like, 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 like you explain. That's why time to time I come on and, and I might ask you, like, like, like when I asked you about the Maui fires and like 
oh, the comparison to Ukraine, it was like because that was dominating the entire thing. And I noticed that like a lot of people who are supposed to be in alt media better than mainstream media. I'm not saying that you can't have some ironic type of like, isn't it weird that we have so much money for war but never for helping out the poor? Like I like I understand those like hypotheses. But if you're not if you're not like doing the mainstream like the job job of a journalist to tell me why that those rules exist and you're just doing it like Oh, Ukraine is getting money, so they don't care about people in Maui, and and, and you're just not giving me anything else. Then it's like, how are you different than the mainstream media that you claim to fucking hate? Like, you know what I mean? And it's like you're supposed to be better than mainstream media. Like they, they everyone's t- tagline, oh, better than mainstream media. It's like, okay, but then you guys are just talking about the mainstream media. Like, I, I, it, it's a shot at TYT, by the way. But um, you know, but it, it, it's it's just like I just I just I just get tired of people who want to dominate progressive spaces. And then all of a sudden start having more establishment takes as you go along. And then it's like, then you can't question them because they say that they're anti-war. Like, I can't question Jimmy Dore anymore because he says he's anti-war for some reason. But even though I'm and he he's going the more ignorant fucking route all the fucking time. Like, this guy's going with, like, you know, like, uh, uh, I'm keeping up with them. But, like, I watched this account called The Post Left Watch where they post, like, some of the takes they're doing. And, like, he's just going in a completely, like... Like, like he's downplaying anything anti-LGBTQ that Putin is doing because Ukraine, or he'll basically just constantly just uh, downplay like a lot of people's like struggles in like with racially and all that kind of stuff. He always the the gimmick is they they always do like I'm not saying working class stuff isn't important, but they always use it as a gimmick to like excuse like systemic fucking racism for some odd reason. Right, I I just just let you know that um. I am anti-war, so no one's allowed to criticize me either. Just let it make a neck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm anti. I'm, no, I'm anti-war too, bro. I'm anti- no, but listen. Be, be, before I go, I I enjoyed this conversation a lot. This but, was uh, no. I thought. Listen, I think I think you think this made less sense than it actually did. I think your what you laid out is it's not obviously everybody's experience, but I think what you laid out is the thought process of you know, a a, a decent sized subsection of people who sort of land on reactionary content uh, when they're not necessarily political and they're just looking, I guess, for an explanation of uh, that backs up their conclusion. I think that's the best way to describe it, sort of. These are people who don't know how they landed on what they believe. Uh, And I'm not saying it's a political thing either. It could be like um, uh, this game, this video game, is no good because I heard it was woke. They don't know what that means. They don't know what the they don't know the details of that. They just think they this is they're anti woke because they heard that's bad, and they like video games. They heard this video game is woke, so this video game must be bad. And that's how they fall down that pipeline of these like anti SJW YouTubers and and content creators. Because they're just trying to understand, like, okay, if someone asks me why, I need to be able to explain. I don't know why, and so that's you know they're looking they're looking to back up their conclusion, and that's how they find these people. See, and and, and before I go, I say the other the other main thing that made me like uh, recently, for example, so whenever I say that these companies for social media purposes do sports entertainment, like for example, when they say that a company is going to do diversity, um, inclusion, equity type of um, uh, type of uh, seminars right and then they'll present the most extreme version like so at these seminars they got a black woman to say that she can call a white woman Karen 24 7 and slap her in the face and then you have like Anna Kasparian going see this listen man I, I'm, I'm all for I'm all for um, I'm all for um, uh, um, you know talking about racism but this is too far you can't call women Karen and slap her in the face and then and then and then, and then, it'll, lead, and then it'll lead into an anti-critical race theory thing, type of thing and they're misleading right there so like they, so they'll find their stories like I, I've been watching to see how they're gonna present more stories like they'll go no we're fighters for for, for against racism and anti-trans stuff but then they're presenting like these pretentious over-the-top um seminars that i i personally believe that's supposed to be supposed to make you think that racism racism is getting out of control because like what reminds me of like in the in the, in the in mid 90s when i was like less political right i noticed that there was more pro-black stuff in the mid in the early early to mid 90s and then i felt like as a society there was stuff that was going on where like it, the, the, the O.J. Simpson stuff 
created a whole divide. Like people think that anyone that defended OJ Simpson, not that defending OJ Simpson, but like the like for example, if you're a regular black dude who has been in trouble with the law and like wrongfully been like, you know, fucked over by the law, or whatever, if you're seeing this is why I say the celebrity shit is what what manufactures consent. Some people are not like cheering on OJ, but cheering on the fact that maybe a black person like like you know, I remember. Like, I know what you're talking about. I remember that. Yes. So, so, so it, feel, so it felt like by the two by the early 2000s, there was an aggressive pushback to pro blackness going on. Like you would downplay, uh, like if some if somebody was calling out the systemic racism, it would be like they, they would get token minorities to then just shit on the person having the progressive fucking take. And then in 2010s, it felt like we're getting more progressive and we're going that way. And then the whole, the, you know, the, 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 all this riot stuff happened, whatever. And now it feels like in, in the 2020s, there's right wing forces that are trying to push, push back against claims of racism. So now you're going to be using these viral fucking uh, seminars or viral videos to basically do your anti racism, ba- like, go, go, like, go. So I'm correlating it because I saw the same thing happen back in the late 90s and early 2000s that I fell for. And now I'm seeing it being pushed back again in the 2020s. If you know, does that make no, any sense? Or no, it does. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, it, I will say a lot of times the discourse does uh, ebb and flow, and what's old is new again. And uh, that's that's yeah, that's what we're certainly seeing in some in some aspects for sure. Yeah, for, for, okay, yeah, and, and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna get going, but um, shout out to you. Know, um, what's the, the 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 pretty bad lefty? What's his name? What's his name on the show again on Majority Report? Oh, Brandon Sutton. Yeah, yeah, because he's in the chat, and he, I, no, I, no, I, this I, is I, someone I, else. Bad lefty is someone else. That's not. I, oh, I know. Shit, okay. Yeah, I, you know, I know it's confusing. The, the last couple of times, the bad lefty guy has been uh, giving me props for the chat, and I think I may have met. Uh, I I may have messaged. Um, Brandon Sutton on Twitter to say, "Yo, thanks uh. for like sticking up for." <laughs> Dude, I, I had no idea, but some no, listen, man. Some people want to be confused by me in the chat. That's fine. I understand. I'm not likable to everybody, but some people fuck with me in your chat. And I, 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 you know, like it, it's not as bad as a Stern show. You know what I mean? Like bad as Stern show audience, where like I feel uh, like you got being... what, what you got to do is you get play no mind to the chat because. Especially if you're someone who regularly does content. Listen, I'll be, I'm someone, that they're, they're in my, they're on my oh, video, man. on my channel, and I'll hear shit, I'll see shit like from, for, at me, on in my own chat. You just gotta, you just gotta, what, what, if you do, if you do this, you gotta just not even, I mean, obviously you could read it if you wanna bring something up, but you can't take anything to heart. Everything, people just, you know, let their, let their, unfiltered opinions out in there sometimes because I don't know. That's just that are in front of a computer. It's a lot easier. Uh, so don't take anything to heart. I'm a big fan of when you call in Hansi. Uh, I think you, you bring up great points from a perspective that we don't often hear from on these type of shows. Also, I love the fact that uh, a, a, a band member of Howard Stern's Whack Pack is a regular caller into my show. I'll always love that. Uh Dude. Dude, 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 you're amazing, bro. And I, I, and I, I don't call into many. I call into your show, and I call into Post Wrestling. I don't know if you heard of them. Like they, they, they do a good job with the wrestling podcast. I'm familiar with right? them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, those guys are good. Dude, I call to the Patreon show or some of the live pay per views. So like, you guys are the only two shows that I really actually call into. So like, you know, what I mean, like, so I, I enjoy, I enjoy your take. And you don't seem like someone that's like you know regressive or anything like that. You know what I mean? Like you don't seem like you're one of the edge lord types. Because listen, I'm not saying edge lord type can be funny. It just to me, I feel like it's just as much of a gimmick as the overly PC. So like, and I see through that. It's like it, it doesn't it doesn't have as much effect on me as when in the late '90s, early 2000s, when I was craving edge lord stuff. You know what I mean? Like when you see like 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 for example, I used to be like a clean cut guy, but then like. I would notice that women like Eminem, and I'm like, yo, this guy talks about raping his mother and like, you know, hitting women all the time, and these women are attracted to him. So now, do I gotta act like a misogynist to basically? So I try to <laughs> adopt the misogynist, and I never had it in me because it never came off authentic. Like I would say like fucked up shit because I thought, okay, well, if women like Eminem and they're good looking women, then I guess like I gotta be an edge lord as well. Like you know what I mean? So that's where I learned. I I consumed too much entertainment and not enough politics growing up, and I. 
I would like see and mimic what like was hot in, with like edge lords basically. So that's you know what I mean. And I, and I know that means you. I, I, I got to be a boring person now, right? You know what I mean? Because, like, if you're not an edgelord, then people consider you boring and too PC. So I got to find the balance of trying to be interesting and funny without, like, ha like you know, resorting to just being an edgelord, I guess, if that makes sense. Right. No, I hear what you're saying. All right. I think, no. You know, dude, I, I take up too much of your time. Thank you for um, putting Don't me on. Don't worry man. about I, it. I wouldn't have let you on as long as I did if I felt like you were wasting my time. Tell uh, Sam Cedar. Tell Sam Cedar. I got his. Uh, I, I got it. I got his set taken over. <laughs> we'll do. Take care, Hansi. Always a pleasure. All right. Ooh, it's eleven thirty. Time flew. That was. Uh, I. I enjoy talking with Hansi. I really do. I'm not just saying that because he's on the air. I think he's a uh, uh, interesting guy who brings up uh, a, a perspective that I don't think we usually. I think there's a lot of people who actually. Um, were like him or are like him still um, who have that sort of background where they're coming up from. Hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? It is Kowalski. Kowalski, are you like in a coal mine right now? Where are you? Why is it so dark where you are? Um... Well, it's certainly not my easy way of hiding a mess in my spare room, but I thought the ambiance would be perfect as I am going to The lighting is help... completely off. You're outdoors in your, your background. <laughs> Wait, but, what does but it you're, look like? You're, you're, you, have a ba you have like an outdoor background, right? You have like oh, the woods. Oh, I must have messed with the uh, setting on that. That's you have really a strange. you have an outdoors background, mm. and you are you you look like you're down in like the coal mines right now, but like you're back like because you're out like outlining your body. Yeah, I see that now, and that is absolutely hilarious. Uh, let's see, I don't even remember messing with any of this. Boom! There. It's still completely dark, <laughs> but at least there's no weird background anymore. Um, all right, that's interesting. Well, anyways, I am calling. I would in say because... some people, some people are uh, bringing up that you you look like extremely <laughs> sus. What you were doing? <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. It, it, it did potentially look like you were you, you you were doing like blackface or something. <laughs> That's how weird that visual looked of that <laughs> extremely bright woods greenery background and like just the outline of you completely. I mean, in in when when you first leaned forward, it looked like you were slightly had light on you. So that's why I was like, "Are you in a cave? Do you look like you're in a coal mine?" But then when you leaned back and the background fully came in and it just was your outline, then it looked weird, <laughs> extremely weird. But continue. Well, you said you were feeling a little down in the dumps. So if I've learned anything from watching you with entertainment, what your show needs now more than ever is a heel. I am prepared well, I to be that I, Did heel. I say I was down in the dumps or did I just say like... You said you were down in the dumps. You weren't feeling it. You were going to cancel the whole show. That, I that's, didn't say that's that. That's the energy that I never, was getting. That never happened whatsoever, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what's up? What were you going to... Oh, you need to give me my heel? Yeah, I was going to be your heel, but the problem is is that I don't know what a heel to Matt Bender would be. So what would your heel be? Is it like some sort of libertarian? Is it some Twitter adversary? What is Matt Bender's enemy? I don't know. I guess like... Uh, I, I guess like a alcoholic... Uh, right winger, or who does lots of, who smokes twelve packs a day, and I don't know. <laughs> oh, shoot. I don't know. I'm trying I to think like the opposite. The opposite. Got asthma, so the opposite of me work. would be because you know I'm I'm <laughs> left wing, straight edge, like a I guess a a country music listening, alcoholic right winger, who um, hates pro wrestling. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to think. It's hard. 
Oh, All right, you're, Elon Simp you're says bad lefty. Yeah, there. it's pretty obvious. Twitter blue checks is Ponderosapine. <laughs> yeah, those are those are all obvious. I should have went with one of those. That's pretty obvious. Well, um, all right. I think you've given material to work with next week. I will call in from a pickup and start, you know, talking from behind the steering wheel very a- angrily, and uh, we'll go from there. I'm looking but forward to. I was to... also. All right, go ahead. Yeah. Oh no, um, I was just gonna say. Uh, so the last two days, it had been over 100 degrees in central Nebraska. Tonight, it's getting down to like 52. So, you know, it kind of feels like fall's coming. However, this cold all came at once because a big cold front moved in from Canada. You know what came with it? Smoke. There is so ah. much smoke in the air right now. It looks like there's like, you know how like when snow is falling, like the cities will start glowing because, you know, all the lights reflecting off of it. Right. That's what my town looks like right now. Really? It's horrifying. Yeah. This, the, you really? guys had a few smoke we, days we, in New we York, We did right? during the summer. It was bad. It was really – the sky was, like, fire red, and there was, there was smoke all – you could smell it. You could sm- smell the burning. And this was down in New York City where, you know, not exactly – uh, you know, new, when people, you know, New York borders Canada, but I mean, upstate, upstate New York, like we're, we're like eight hours away in New York City and we could smell it. Yeah, that's the other thing. We can also start to smell it here, too. And it's supposed to be smoky for two days. Now, my question is, is Canada doing this intentionally? And if mm. so, how do we get them back? Mm. We should. uh Burn down our forests and blow the smoke their way. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, I mean, right, I don't know. All right, Alaska think... has to take one for the team. All right, yeah, 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 there you go. All right, Alaska, get to it. Start burning shit down. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they are Canada, so, I mean, we don't really have to get back at them. They, uh, <laughs> they get back at themselves enough. No, I'm joking. I'm joking to my Canadian listeners. Did we get did we get a raid? Is there a raid? Oh, thank God they didn't do the raid. Well, oh, like Ravana raided. Suspicious. Thank you so much, Ravana. Hello, Ravana uh, viewers over at on Twitch. Um, this is the uh, you know the the, the call in portion of my show. Uh, talking to uh, Kowalski, who's in the shadows, and we're talking about the. Uh, the wildfires raging in Canada and how, you know, I, I hear New York City experienced, experienced, excuse me, the smoke and the fire and the the smell of burning in the air a few times earlier this in the, during the summer. Kowalski in Nebraska is dealing with it right now. Man, Canada, we're, we're, we're getting sick of Canada blowing their shit our way, aren't we? Canada not sending their best. But I also this will be where I leave you because I know you're a bit of a musical buff. Um, I'm very sorry that you know the lead singer of Smash Mouth passed away and Jimmy you know, Buffett I've, over the I've, last I've, week. You like, know, I'm it's not. Been a hard I was week. never. I was never a fan of either, but they both seemed like uh, decent people and said that they've uh, that they've gone. I, you know the, uh, you know Jimmy Buffett seemed like a fair, a positive guy, always uh, singing about uh, hanging out on the beach. Uh, Margaritaville, man. Chilling. Margaritaville. Yeah, I mean, you can't go wrong with that. And then the story of uh, the, the Smash Mouth singer. Sad. That's a sad story. The yeah. dude uh, basically had a uh, struggle with alcoholism for the past like three decades, I believe I heard. And he, his, his, his liver gave out and he uh, passed away. He wasn't that old. He wasn't old at all. He was in his 50s. No, he was 56. Yeah, that's, that's, not that's, old. Too, that's too young to die. That's too young to die. Um, yeah, that's sad. That's sad. Uh, you know, uh, it's sad. I don't know what else to say. Uh, Jimmy Buffett, what was he, 79? I guess, a, eh, I don't know. It doesn't, uh, I feel like it's old, obviously, but it doesn't feel like, uh, you can feel like you got another 10 years of Jimmy Buffett, you know? Well, I mean, in your advanced age, as a senior citizen millennial, you're pushing what, 47, 57, something like that now? I'm, I'm birthday 37. Was what, just... I'm 37. I'm 37. Yeah. yeah, thank you. 
Damn. So 67 years old. Now, I don't know what Bender has done to keep this youthful appearance as he turns 77 a year from now. But, you know, going on to 87 in two years, Matt, that's going to be uh, I'll, I'll leave you there. That, that's a dumb joke. Yeah, I, no, Dan, Dan Wally on Twitch, great point. Like, um, uh, played a gig three months ago, but died in hospice. That, that's crazy. That's crazy how Jeez. quickly he went. Uh, it all went downhill for him. Um, it just goes to show you, you know. I mean, I mean, I, he 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 wasn't the singer of Smash Mouth anymore. I don't think a lot of people realize that they uh, they booted him from the band, or he retired quote unquote um like two years ago after like this video went viral i i i vaguely remember mm. it of him just like completely drunk on stage ranting and raving at fans in the crowd from the stage and you know it's 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 sad it's sad uh you know for wrestling had its uh it's sad week the week before that with um our legend Terry Funk, the, the I guess the an- analogous to Jimmy Buffett, also seventy nine. Interestingly enough, um, mm. but then Bray Wyatt, who uh, died at thirty six years old, fighting uh, heart complications from COVID. I mean, it, it's it's very sad. People dying, people dying left and right, man. You know, that is going to be a very hard thing, I think, for a lot of people to come to terms with over the next few years is all of the complications we're going to be seeing from long COVID. Because, like, I know for people in their 50s, it is causing some, like, issues with people's brains, like micro strokes are up, headaches are up, that sort of thing. And then you combine that with Canada poisoning our air with all this smoke. That's going to lead to more asthma and such which isn't going to be fun to deal with. You know what? The whole world's on fire. And we, we can't even retreat to Hawaii because they're also on fire. That was my plan B. Where do we go? Yeah. New yeah, Zealand? I don't know. I don't know. Build the bunker, I guess, right? Yeah. <laughs> don't go. Don't move to Australia. The whole continent's a fire hazard. And did you know that 9-11 occurred a day before it happened here and they didn't even have the decency to warn us? Oh, right, right. They, they, they should have known, <laughs> right? I mean, they're living a, a day before us. Yeah, they're in the future. But all right, I'm going to get back to writing my manifesto as I feel like I am in the perfect position to lead the new church of whatever this is in the darkness so we will follow you have a good night to hell and back (laughs) kowalski take care (laughs) goodbye uh let's take this call hey what's your name where you coming from oh hey hey you're on the air hey what's your name where you coming from hey it's jenna Hey, Um, Jenna, how are you? What do you want to talk about? Hey, uh, some really cool shit. I got my video up, by the way, if you want to put me on. Oh, yep. I got you up. Yep. Oh, okay, cool. Um, Took some... uh, I'm sorry. I did forget to ask, didn't I? It just went up automatically. My bad. Usually I ask. No worries. It's all good. Um, I have a couple cool updates that I'm really excited about. Yeah. So I got my first in-person appointment scheduled for my bottom surgery. Oh, congratulations. It's moving, it's, it's moving along. It is. It's moving along. And I had to do so much fucking insane prep. That was exhausting. I can't and, even imagine. Yeah. And so it's just like, I'm just really proud of myself because it's like, you know, I'm not there yet. I'm, I'm still very much like once I get the surgery scheduled and then actually do it, then I will be like, Whew. but like, it's, it's an, it's been a nice, I had to do electrolysis hair removal twice a week for like two months. So I was just exhausted and now I'm back down to one a week. And so it's, it, I'm, it's, it's, it's a nice break right before the big, you know, momentous, uh, final surgery. I'm 
And um, so I'm just, I'm kind of just trying to enjoy it and just kind of turn my brain off for a little bit. Um, but also, um, Ravana, you know Ravana, I'm sure. I do. Ravana just raided me, and Ravana has been on the show multiple times. I got to get Ravana back on the show because uh, easily one of my favorite people to talk to. Oh yeah, she's so cool, and um, she she streamed my interview with Leonor from Five Iron Frenzy tonight. Oh cool! Yeah, so I was really excited about that, and so I was like, oh, I gotta go on and tell Matt because he understands. And so, yeah, I'm just, um, I'm a little bit stoned too. So I just, oh, it's been a lot. And so, I mean, I, I don't really have much else to say. I just wanted to pop in and, and give a little update because I always really enjoy talking to you, especially with how much great music you know. So. Oh, I appreciate that. And um, I'm, I'm glad you called in. Always a pleasure. I mean, this this line is open for callers, whether they want to call in and talk about well, they could call in and talk about anything and everything, but also they could call in and talk for uh, an hour, like Hansi just did. Uh, not really an hour, but <laughs> it, we went on for a while. Uh, or could call in and talk for just a few minutes, like uh, it seems like you just wanted to do. So I appreciate. The yeah, call. I always have something else to talk about, but just like honestly, I'm just so tired, and so no, I, I hear just, you. I yeah, uh, I'm I'm two hour and forty minute stream so far, probably. If there's another call, I could see us going for another like, 10 minutes, maybe get us to, to midnight. We're almost there. But right. the show's winding down. show's winding down now. Oh, but you're on like the West on Coast, Mafia. right? It's not, What's it's, that? Not, it's, it's not midnight for you, right? You're on the West Coast. No, right? it is. Um, I just had my electrolysis appointment today, so that's why I'm tired. Um, uh, it's almost 9. So. Okay, because I just said to you that, oh, I'll probably just stream until midnight. And you're probably thinking, oh, he's in the stream. He's only going to stream for another three hours. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, no, I, I know you live in New York because okay. you, were, you would be in studio when you worked with the Majority Report. Um, right, right. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I got it. But I, I also appreciate you trying to fill in the gaps for us West Coasters. Um, no, um, I mean, but you're always up. Like, you're leftist mafia. You're always one of the last ones doing all the Super Chats. And I think it's great, by the way. You have so much energy. It's great. I don't know where you get it all from. Because I have a lot, I too. But I think you have more than me. I appreciate it. I mean, I, it's been, you know, it, 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 it's, it's like like I said before with, uh, you know, the, the, the current events of the day. It ebbs and flows. Yeah. There's, there'll, be, there'll be stretches of time where I feel like I have just a ball of energy. And that's how I felt for the previous few weeks. This this past week or two, I've actually felt a bit tired. I I think I've got down what happened, um, which is what I was very active these past couple of months. Um, I was playing. Uh, I I joined a soccer league. My okay. kids were home. Mm -hmm. Now I think uh, the, the 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 past few weeks, interestingly enough, it's the between seasons for soccer. Summer season ended. Fall season doesn't begin till next week. Um, I, I, uh, my kids are getting ready to go back to uh, uh, school. Plus, they weren't here for a couple of days last week because they went out. They went on a, uh, you know, uh, they stayed with the grandma for a couple of days. Oh, how cute! So I, I think, I think I was feeling. I think I need the energy back in my life for me to now have the energy once again. For me, I'm excited because my favorite mindless distraction. NFL football is coming back and my Raiders, I mean, we say it every year because we're a delusional fan base, but I really do think we have a good shot and I'm just really excited with all the pieces we have. So yeah, I, I, I hear you. It's, you know, oh, and it's, someone brought up my, uh, my swimmers ear. I, is that what it's called? How I was feeling, you know, uh, uh, I had like vertigo ever since I went on that boat ride that boat trip. Oh, uh, that's when I was on right. Vacation. You went down to Mexico I, for what? Your cousin's wedding or something? Yeah. And then I, I went on a boat for that for a couple of hours on one of the days. And I never like I got Whoa. they call it like sea legs. And I never I actually like it, it comes it comes and goes now. Like it's obviously not as bad as it was. I, but there was the, that those couple of weeks after I got back. It was just constant. But now it's just like. I'll just be sitting here working and then all of a sudden. I got to get up and walk around because I'm not f feeling dizzy a little bit lightheaded. 
it's it sucks. It's still here. I didn't go to a doctor because it is going away. It mm-hmm. is like going away. So it's obviously not a serious issue. It's just obviously, I guess I'm a person who uh, this takes a while for me to get over the the thing. But um, yeah, I still got well, it. Yeah, I'm really glad that that's happening. I'm sure that was fucking annoying as hell. Yeah. And a little scary. Yeah. 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 But uh, it was really cool. The audience, I, I've, oh, I meant to say Rivana's audience really, Rivana loved it. The audience loved the interview. And so it was, it was really one. cool. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, I'm super proud of it. And it just, it, it, it's really cool that they saw what I thought is there. And so, yeah. Um, I'm very excited about a lot of things. A lot of positive things are happening for me. And so. It's nice sometimes to take a little break from all the crazy stuff I've been going through. So, yeah, as always, again, thanks for letting me yap. No, always a pleasure. Have a great night. Thank you for coming. You too. And I hope uh, your your sea legs keep getting better. Thank you. I hope so too. (laughs) Right? Take care. (laughs) All right, folks. I think, uh, oh, Super Chats. I'm going to read some Super Chats. Uh, Renee with a Super Chat. Uh, don't you dare profane the name of Count Gorkula. Read this in his voice. That doesn't work for me either. Uh, Renee, we've lost the context. I'm sorry, my friend. Um, narrator with a super chat. The security camera footage that came out from a family. Oh, oh, oh talking about the, the Crowder thing, right? The security camera footage came out from a family or friend of his wife after his divorce announcement that he chose wrong, but do not blame his kids. Right, he chose wrong. I forgot about that phrasing. He chose wrong. Oh, my God. Jay Rude with a super chat. Careful, people. COVID is spreading. I just tested positive. Oh, I'm sorry, Jay Rude. I hope you feel better. Jay Rude continues. Plus side, I get to stay up and watch the stream instead of sleep for work tomorrow. <laughs> well, that's that is a positive. Thank you, Jay Rude, for uh, choosing to spend your sick day with uh with me on the stream. Uh, over on Twitch, uh, liberals are heroes. Subscribe with Prime. Thank you so much. Don James, 1676, resubscribed, uh, subscriber for 14 months. Happy to give Binder my support. Thank you, Don James. Uh, Twinkle, resubscribed for one month, uh, subscriber for six months. Six months, still no Twitch emotes. Oh, you're right. I hate to upload the Twitch emotes. I'm sorry. I will do it. I'm sorry. Um, what else we got? Uh, uh, Yazo, thank you for becoming a, a member, a supporter, over at youtube.com slash Matt Binder, an official uh, member here. Uh, Jay from New Jersey with his membership super chat. Thoughts on the CM Punk firing? I personally thought he should have been fired after Brawl uh, last year. I am a CM Punk fan. So uh, while I don't like to see him go, I get why they had to do it. Um, apparently, he... Uh, lunged at Tony Khan or there was some sort of spat with Tony Khan in the backstage and this was all caught on video apparently because Wembley Stadium's got security cameras everywhere. Um, I hope I, I hope he, he shows up again somewhere. Um, I am a big CM Punk fan and I hope if there is some sort of issues he's going through. I hope he gets help and I hope he, he solves those issues because he is a, a a great talent. I'm a big fan. And I hope to see him uh, in the wrestling world again. It's It's been hard to be a CM Punk fan uh, being that we've gone in without him so long after he left the WWE early 2014 and hasn't showed up until 2021 again in, in pro wrestling at least. Um. Yeah. Um. That that's that's my thoughts. I get why they had to do it. I wish they didn't, but I get it. Hope that makes sense. 
Does that make sense? All right, folks. Uh oh. The Twitch streamers, the Twitch members are revolting over lack of emotes. I'm going to, don't worry, guys and gals. I see you. I hear you. I'll likely continue to do nothing, but I see you and hear you. Uh, <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I'll get them up there. I promise you. I promise you. Oh, Jay from New Jersey with a super chat. Uh, will you make an appearance at the Wu-Tang show next Friday at MSG? Also, what is the internet hype surrounding Bobby Althoff? Althoff. Oh, I will not be making an appearance at the Wu-Tang show on Friday at MSG. That's for sure. I won't be there. Um... Excuse me, gee, I'm yawning now. Oh my god, I'm getting tired. Um, Jay from New Jersey. Uh, Bobby, is that the um that? That's that person who got those interviews with like Drake, right? And now Shaq, right? And that's am I am I? Yeah. Okay. She's like a a, a YouTube. No, not a YouTuber. A TikToker. And she's got a big doing TikTok stuff. She just posts funny videos on TikTok. That's all. I don't think there's anything more to that. And I think she just like swung for the fences, which is smart. Reached out to people to see if they would let her interview them. And she has a big TikTok audience. I mean, I think... Hell, I think I should go that route. And uh, A, start doing TikTok stuff. And then B, just reach out to people. You never know. That's my... You know, that's... Uh, you never... Again, the worst thing someone you could have on the show can say to you is is, is no. All right, folks. I think that's it for the show. Let us Oh. Of course. Patreon.com slash Mapbinder. First of the month or that was this weekend, so it's the first show since the first of the month. Always really rough time. We lose patrons because of financial issues, because of cards getting declined. Totally get it. If you aren't a patron and can afford to do so, and you've been looking, thinking about supporting the streams, my work, what I do, now would be a great time. Now would be a great time. If you want to. If you want to. Patreon.com slash And of course, YouTube.com slash MapBender. Twitch.tv slash MapBender. Um, I will see you Thursday. Majority Report. I will see you Thursday. Leftist Mafia. And I really, I really will look into seeing uh, some people. I'll, I'll, I'll say this again. Some people, uh, some people have reached out to me because a couple of weeks ago, I said I really need an editor, and I didn't mean I was hiring on the, on the spot, but a bunch of people reached out to me, and now I'm really, really thinking about what I need is an editor, someone just basically to help me get this stuff out there. Because I could, I could sit here and, and create it all day. It's the actual editing process. It's the the posting and distribution. That That's the annoying part. That's the part where you run out of time. Because I'm sitting here. I'm doing this stuff with you. When we get off the air, when I get off the stream, it's it's midnight now. I, I, I can't sit down. I'm, I'm exhausted. I got work tomorrow morning. 
I got to take my kids to school in the morning. School started this week. So if I could have someone do that, you know, maybe not a ton of stuff. Maybe, maybe I could get someone to do just some extra stuff for me to get extra content up there. So I'm going to reach out to everyone. To reach, if, if, if you reached out to me to do the editing stuff, to be an editor, I'll get back to you in the next couple of days. Maybe we'll work something out short term, very temporary to see how it works out. I'm not very temporary. Uh, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Definitely not full time. I wouldn't even call it part time, very part time. Like maybe like a few hours, a couple hours a, a week. I'll throw you this footage. You just clip it. Maybe if I get some time to do actual just like video content, not live stream content, that would require some editing. But it would be short, short. I wouldn't send you more than five, ten minutes of footage. So if that's, if you got time, looking for and you're a fan of the show and you want to think about you have editing abilities reach out to me if you're interested if you already did I'm going to get back to you this week I think that's the next phase the next chapter for this show particularly and then I also really want to work and this is on me I can't have anyone else do this part I really want to get this newsletter going so that's the next thing too these two things are number one on my list. Number one and two on my list. All right. Just, you know, letting you guys know. Yeah, you can still apply. Uh, DM me on Twitter or Instagram. That's where most people reach out to me. Or my email, matt at xmattx.com. M-A-T-T at X, M-A-T-T-X dot com. Um, yeah. All right, everyone. See you Thursday. Majority Report. Leftist Mafia. Kowalski, thank you for the last minute coffee super sticker. I appreciate that. And um, uh, if you're thinking about it, though, definitely apply in the next like day or so. Because I'm going to definitely reach out to people. Uh, like by the weekend, I would say, or over the weekend. Um, J Rocks, I'm I'm ending the show now, my friend. Could you call in on uh, next week? Okay, uh, you have to call in via Skype, doomed live on Skype. Oh, who should I rate on Twitch? And I'll take your call first thing if you call in next week. You could email or DM. For the uh, if if for editing, what you should send me. People send me resumes. That's fine, but I really prefer to see like just like videos you've edited, or if you have a a reel. If you don't have a reel, that's fine too. Just I I want to see some of the stuff that you you do, not because I'm like oh I'm gonna like look over it and see. I just want to see if it's a fit of what particularly I'm looking for. I don't want someone who's you know, uh, um, you know maybe. I don't want to even, you know, waste anyone's time if they're think this is bigger than it is. Like they're too talented. <laughs> um, so uh, s send me uh, clips of what you do. Uh, who should I rate on Twitch? Let's see. Let's see. Um, Doobie Burb is not on. Rotted Ranch, Amy C3. Oh, and I should say, if you want more content, if you want me to get an editor so I can get more content, patreon.com slash Matt Bender. Because I definitely cannot do it without uh, viewer, listener support. Uh, and if we keep if we keep losing patrons and subscribers on YouTube or Twitch, then I won't have the funds to 
<laughs> to do it. Uh, so, uh, okay. Uh, who should I rate? Mm-hmm. Let's raid. Let's raid Amy C three. I haven't raided Amy in a little bit. <laughs> All right, rating Amy C three. Get in your your editor uh, emails and DMs if you're interested. Patreon dot com slash Matt Binder. I will see you all on Thursday, or next time on Doomed.